What's up, tricksters and tricksetters, and welcome to another Tier 3 Sub Live VOD review. I mean, you're probably watching this in a form of clip, but this was live. So, today at our coaching table, we have Immortal 3 Rays on Bind, our dear friend and moderator, Acid Voyager. Now, a bit of a backstory here. You know, we need a bit of a... Uh, you know, backstory. So, first of all, I did coach Acid Voyager back when he was like silver or bronze. You know? And, 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 and... He went from silver, bronze... I, I'm, I'm not really sure, was it silver, silver or bronze? Uh, he went from silver, bronze all the way up to immortal 3. Now, in this thread right here, he said that he is an Ascendant 3 player, right? Right, right now, he is Ascendant 3. But I'm not gonna count this VOD review as an Ascendant 3 VOD review. It's gonna be Immortal 3. Because he did get Immortal 3 a lot of times. But basically, like, it was at least, like, I don't know. He was Immortal here, he was Immortal 3, Immortal 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, like, I don't know. Uh, so, essentially, we cannot count this as an Ascendant. Uh, real Ascendant VOD review. Uh, it was Bronze 3. Bronze 3. So, br from Bronze 3 to Immortal 3. That was a long time ago. I'm not gonna lie. Like, we did our one-month coaching, like... Uh, it was basically in Episode 1, Act 3. Like, this is when we started. So, in this act, he was like Bronze 3. And then he slowly climbed his way up to Immortal. Uh, and we did another month of coaching when he was stuck a bit, like, in this diamond, as far as I know. And then he finally got Immortal 3. Uh, he's been Immortal for quite some time. Uh, and let's see, you know, how we can improve this. But obviously he's not playing the game. Like, that's that's immediately the fucking problem, you know. Like, uh, I mean, coaching is pointless if you're not going to invest a lot of time in Valorant. Now, for le first let's see what, what this guy, uh, what, what Acid said to us. I'm fairly certain my biggest issue is being aware of enemy's playstyle. How to counter that playstyle as well as being aware of the utility the team has available. Plus asking for said utility in more focused situations. Th that's a big problem. Especially in Immortal and Ascendant ELO. I mean Immortal ELOs, let's say. Like, you need to be mega aware. Of all of the possibilities that you have in a specific round. Like basically, you need to track, like, uh, what is the macro placel of the enemies, how fast they rotate, how they play on a both macro and micro level, which ultimates they have, which abilities they have, etc, etc. So, like, uh, especially, like, when you're moving in that medium elo, you know, like, from Ascendant 1 to Immortal 3, so, to high elo lobbies, uh, you need to track your teammates and enemies 24-7. Like, that is very important. Like, leading your allies on a macro level a bit. You know, telling them what to push, where to go, and stuff like that. And also, like, uh, on a macro, micro level, like, tracking everything. Like, uh, what your teammates are doing, enemies, etc, etc. Like, basically, you know, I would say that the most important skill set that you need to master in Ascendant and Low Immortal is just overall, like, uh... uh Team play, ranked team play, reading the game, and understanding all of the possibilities that you have within a specific round, match, or in a specific situation. Like, what is the best play to do in that specific uh, scenario, obviously. I mean, there's so many ways how we can fix this, you know, as you improve your game knowledge. You fix your adaptiveness, you fix this as well. As you improve your map awareness, you fix this as well. I don't know if I share with you any type of training for this. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm gonna check it later, like, in a private messages. But, uh, you know, when we did our coaching, that was a long time ago. Like, that was 2020 and 2021. To be fair, my coaching back then was... Eh, eh, not that good. I mean, it was good because, like, it was very easy to reach Radiant. You know, like, uh, you can just abuse one playstyle, you know, like, just use a fucking jet with an operator, judge, Bucky, and <laughs> run it down, you know, like... Uh, you could have used, like, so many different playstyles to get Radiant. These days, you know, it's not that simple. You need to invest a lot of time in the game. A lot. If you want to get Radiant. 
and you need to diversify yourself a lot as well. As well as, for example, in a situation where I see that my teammate is fighting, and I can make a play out of it, to tell him to keep fighting. Never do that and leads to people stopping the fight and enemies not being occupied enough for a play to work. In a situation where I see that my teammates, teammate is fighting and I can make a play of that to tell him to keep fighting. Never do that and leads to people stopping the fight and enemies. Aha, okay, okay, I understand. So you're basically not like navigating your teammates on a micro level ever. Okay. Okay, I mean... We're gonna see, like, what you can do better, and we'll try to find some solutions for this. Like, in this water review, we're gonna heavily focus on, on uh, better team play, reading the enemies better, reading the utility a bit better, and what that means for you. Like, essentially, just noticing the opportunities that you have, and win conditions. Like, you know, once again, TLDR. When you're going from Iron 1 to Ascendant 1, the main four skill sets that you want to polish out and improve are the game knowledge, decision-making, team play, and mechanical skill. That's it. Like, that's the main shit that you want to work on. And I would argue, I would even remove the team play, game knowledge, decision-making, and mechanical skill. When you reach medium elo, ascendant low immortal, ascendant 1 to immortal 2, Immortal 3. All of these three skill sets need to be on a very high level. And you need to include as well, essentially, like uh, uh, ranked team play. Like basically reading the game, reading the enemies, understanding possibilities. How do you understand win conditions in Valorant? Like, how can you understand them better? Basically, self vote reviews, analysis of everything, remembering stuff, you know, like taking the notes. Of what you want to do in a specific match against specific team comp against specific enemies with specific teammates adapting like taking the notes of what type of teammates you have in a match and how you should adapt to them taking the notes of what type of enemies you have in a match and what you should do in the future matches to counter them like the, the, the amount of scenarios in valorant is not unlimited like there's around like 3000 to 4000 scenarios that repeat 24 7. it takes time to learn all of this shit and to put it on a good autopilot mode. But I firmly believe that no matter how stupid you are, good or bad, anyone can do that. Literally anyone. Now, uh, when it comes to like uh, going from Immortal 3 to Radiant, like uh, then, you know, like uh, your mechanical skill needs to be like minimum high Immortal 3. Like you should be able to contest the enemies that are like 400, 500 rank rating in a 50-50 fight, like, you should win that, you should win a 50-50 duel at least 40% of times, minimum. Then, game knowledge should be superb. Team play, rank team play should be superb. And like, decision making should be superb. Also, when you're going from Immortal 3 to Radiant, mentality is mega important and communication, but especially mentality. Like, mentality and attitude that you have, like how you grind the game, what type of approach you take. And, of course, like playtime is very important, like the game is mega grindy. At some moment, you will always reach the moment of time where your account is getting like plus 16 rank rating and you're losing 19 or 20. Like, you need to have 60% win rate in order to go from Immortal 3 to Radiant. On an account with a, you know, stable MMR, like basically regular MMR. Now. Another thing, and the most important thing, when you're going from Immortal 3 to Radiant, is adaptiveness. Like, learning how to play every scenario to the game, in the game. Like, learning not only what your agent does, but what other agents can do to help you out, or for you to counter them, or for them to fuck you up. It's a very complex game. It's not like Counter-Strike, you know, we have this Molotov, that Molotov, this pathing, this mechanical... It's like... 10 times more complex than CS. But, I still feel that reaching Radiant is possible for anyone, and no matter how stupid you are, you know, like, just the time is the factor. You know, like, how much time you will have to invest in a game to actually get Radiant in Valorant. And coaching is exactly that, like, basically, you're just trading money for time. 
nothing else. Like, there's no magic pill. Now, uh, tracker, I've seen this tracker so many times, you know, even though we didn't keep in check, like, ever. Like, I never saw him ever, like, uh, uh, <laughs> um, you know. When, when was the last time you, you hit me up through the private DMs with some clip, with some wad, with some... Like, basically, every single one of guys, every single player that I've coached in one month coaching has three bonus options after the coaching is done. Every day, they can share with me up to five clips for a quick review, two times per week. You can share a whole VOD for a quick review, and on a daily basis, you can ask me up to five questions. To be honest, we didn't chit chat that much, but I still owe you uh, a free month of coaching that I promised to you because you know you're a good guy, and we did some trading, like uh, you know drug trading with Amsterdam. So like you know Luxembourg. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, now playtime. Up and down. Like, this ain't enough to be consistent Radiant player, to be even consistent Immortal 3 player. Like, you need to play minimum 60 hours in an act, every fucking act, uh, in order to be a consistent Immortal 3 player and to have any chances of uh, reaching Radiant. Like, this is possible. Like, there is a possibility one act you get some crazy win rate, like a crazy run, and you get Radiant by a sheer matter of luck, but you're just relying on luck at that point. I don't know if you're doing any aim training. I don't know if you're doing any, like, training at all. Highly doubt with this many hours in the game. Uh, no wonder you have 200 plus DMs per day. Yeah, like, I mean, basically, like, you know, I, 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 I'm not lying to you. Like, I literally answer on 200 messages per day, every fucking day. Uh, for, just just started cybersecurity class. Couldn't grind for the past two three weeks. That's why this act is down bad. I mean, this is not your life. I'm just explaining like uh, what it takes to be radiant. You know how much time you should actually invest. Overall, like some acts you perform well, some poor. Like it's up and down. But we can see that your your win rate with you know it goes up and down. Like every act you have different problems. To be honest, like uh, I mean we can take the look at. Previous act, like, I mean, this act you have, like, what, 20 matches. You know, that's that's not enough. Like, in the previous act... Uh... Tracker, can I... Uh... Hello? Habla Espanol? So, in the previous act, like, uh... I mean, all of this was optimal. You know, like, you definitely suffer with that uh, ranked team play and reading the enemies. Because all of the players that have low KST... Usually the main problem for them is they are not tracking their teammates enough and they're not tracking enemies enough. Like, they're not choosing the right, gun, right gunfights to fight. Like, KST should always be like 74-75% for every single player in Valorant. Unless you have some gigantic KD and, you know, if you're able to have a ADR of 170, and uh, 1.3 KD, you, you don't need KST. I mean, you're able to solo carry the match and just <laughs> stomp everyone. But that's like 0.1% of Valorant community. So, definitely, like, you know, one, one of, you know, your main problem is exactly what you what you mentioned. Like, uh, better team play and better reading of the game. Clutch percentage is also terrible, man. I don't know what's happening in 1v1s and 1v2s. But, you know, this number here should be, like, Minimum 4% for you. Like, that's like a bare minimum. Bottom. Then, uh, we need to... We need to definitely value our life a bit more. Man, you, you played 101 match of Valorant. And you die, and you were last alive 140 times. You... Based on these stats, you trust your ranked teammates way too much. I don't care if you're playing a duelist, sentinel, whatever. Like, the ratio between your matches and last deaths should always be 4 to 1. Okay, you make an entry. You take a space. You survive. Don't take another fight. Don't take it alone. Beat your teammates a bit. They're gonna be more than happy to die and to take some pointless gunfights. Trust me. 
Like, your ranked teammates only see blood in their eyes. 90% of times. Only blood. Let them fight, refrag them, or make them live a happy life. Be there to fight with them. Don't die in pointless fights that you don't need to fight. Do only the most necessary that you need to do. Now, everything else was like, okay, okay, I mean, whatever. Oof. Okay. I mean, you you struggle a lot on the attack, bro. Like, defense is okay for you. Like, defender stats are, like, quite okay. Attack is where you have most of the problems. Like, on attack, you actually underperform quite a lot. Like, if I was you, <coughs> for the next, like, uh, two or three months, I would just focus on fixing my attacker side. Like, finding better timings to take a fight, better timings to enter, better timings to execute something, better executes in general, better pathing, better postman positioning, like, this, this, with these stats, you know, attacker side is looking grim, essentially, and you're, you're relying a lot on your teammates to win those rounds. Now, he was, he was always a duelist main, I mean, I think I coached him on Dread, the first time he got Immortal 3, so, like, uh, he is playing Jet and Raze, I mean, as I always said, you can keep playing those two agents. Like, uh, I would recommend you to maybe find two more alternative picks. Like, uh, maybe include a bit of Omen, try him out, like, uh, try something new, like, why not? Especially in the act where you feel that Jet and Raze are not working for you. Have some secondary options, you know, like, uh, basically... You, you can main two agents, up to Radiant, but usually the best approach is up to Immortal 3, or when you're Immortal 3, you should have at least two main characters and two alternative fill picks. That should... and that, that's it, essentially. Try Gekko, maybe. Try, like, I don't know. Try Yoru. Why not? You, you never played Yoru in, as, as far as I know, like, uh, try Omen a bit. Uh, you played a lot of Jet, you know, executes are same. Similar. Uh, try, like, uh, Clove, maybe. I don't know, like, uh, Ch Chamber. Chamber is, you know, A tier. Not bad, like, uh... Try something different. Like, if, if you're always hitting the same wall, get out of your comfort zone, try something different. Like, it's just stupid to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. So if you take space, you don't have to get a kill. 80% of times, no. Like, 80% of times your job as a duelist is to take space in a way where you can survive in some kind of a corner or area of the map, wait for your teammates to start pushing in, and then take the fights together with your teammates. So your job is just to apply positional and mental pressure. So enemies need to be aware of multiple peaks and multiple, like, opportunities. Uh, everything else, like... It's okay, I mean, I don't know. On Lotus, we have success with Rays, Haven, Jet, Sunset, Rays, like... On Bind, I don't know why the fuck you feel with Sky. Like, just play, like, Rays, Jet, or Omen, like, you know, the best maps ever for these agents. On 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 all of the maps, you have a quite okay performance. Like, only on Bind and Ascent, you're underperforming a bit. But this ain't that bad, you know? Ain't that bad. This can vary, like, you know, you shouldn't, win rate doesn't matter, because th th that can vary based on what type of uh, mental gorillas you get in your team as well. Like, maybe on Ascent he got m more team diffs than on other maps and shit like that. You know, 40% of matches are always out of your control. Like, that last match that we played on Sunset, on the Unwinnable, like, just... Gecko mentally down, race trolling, Gecko muted, like, just, just go next, essentially, and that's it, like... But 60% of games, it's your fault that you lose them. Now, in eco rounds, man, like, this is criminal. I, this is, a, this is a criminal case. You're playing Jet and Race, and you're not able to have 1 KD in eco rounds. How? Like, literally how? Shorty, Smokes, Dash, Satchels, Nade, Boombot, like... Bucky, like, like... What the fuck, bro? Like, uh... 
we need to do something better in eco rounds. In every other round, you're good, performing quite well. Your KST is like, in pistols and semis, like, eh, okay. But in eco rounds, like, we need to do something better. Because eco rounds are... <coughs> eco rounds are a huge mental breaker for the enemy team. Like, if you're able to have, like, at least 30 to 50% win rate in eco rounds, you, you, you know, you know. You know, you know, like... You're breaking the enemy's mentality and economy quite a lot. Like, okay, 50% win rate is almost impossible, but 20-30%. And this KD should be close to 1. Weapon diver diversity. Uh, okay, I mean, short is a bit there. Operator is top 5. Outlaw is something that you should definitely pick a bit more. Especially since you're playing Jet and Raze on a defender side of any map. When you win the first round, just pick up the Outlaw and fuck up the enemies without a life shield. Judge is there, Stinger and Bulldog, like, Stinger doesn't exist, but Bulldog is there, like, it can be better, obviously, you know, Odin is great on Lotus, Ascent, Haven, those paper maps, when, especially on Lotus, like, your teammates don't want to play together, they, like, uh, <laughs> they, like, uh, are just trolling, and they don't want to take, let's say, aim in space, or something like that, like, up, 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 spam the enemies with Odin and win the round, like, uh, like, like, uh, like a cheesy gorilla. But uh, it's okay, you know, this is not that bad, like, uh, compared to <laughs> what I've seen in some of my, some of my VOD reviews. And Heschel percentage is usually, like, around 20 and up, like, overall, which is solid for, for an Immortal 3 player that is fighting, like, uh, these low Immortals and Ascendants. Like, this is, the, your mechanical skill is probably not your, not your main problem. Okay, other than that... I really have no nothing else to say. I know this guy, like, uh, I've coached him two times. From, you know, Bronze 3 to Immortal 3. I mean, it, it, I think it's time to get Radiant, bro. Like, like, uh, and to seriously take this game. He played in some teams left and right, like some semi-pro shit, but... Like, uh... Not reaching Radiant, like, ever is criminal. But once again, I purely blame it on playtime. Like... Not enough. Like, uh, especially these days, if you want to reach Radiant. Every day, proper warm-up. Every day, some short aim training routine. Every day, minimum. 3 to 5 ranked games, minimum. Essentially, with full 300% focus. Trying to maybe find some duo queue as well is, is gonna boost up your win rate as well. And that's how you get Radiant these days. And of course, like, I mean... If we pre-assume that you fixed all of your problems, you know, like, <laughs> that you're a solid player that deserves Radiant, of course. Uh, okay. Let's see what he presented in this Bind Race VOD L review, baby. Now is the time to start with the actual VOD review. We have the attacker side of Bind with Raze. Immortal 3, Acid Voyager, Raze main, one of my previous coaching students. He went from Bronze 2 to... Immortal 3. Let's help him get that Radiant finally. So, let's do a TLDR of Bind. On Bind, your default bomb site and number one priority is B site. Secondary priority, A site. In the first four to six rounds, you want to play together as five and try to breach into the A site and B site together with your teammates. I don't need these IEMs. I don't know why I'm wearing them during a VOD review. Now, Next thing that we need to know on Bind is that uh, playing default is usually a really bad idea early on in a match, especially if you're playing in the lobbies below Immortal 3, so below high elo lobbies. Why? You don't know what the fuck your teammates are gonna do. This whole map works in a favor of a defender side players. Literally every single choke point where your teammates contest the enemies, enemies have a, a, some kind of an advantage. Early on, Try the 5-man aggressive executes together with your allies. And then, you know, after the 4th or 5th round, decide. Can we continue playing like that? Or do we need to split a bit, a bit more, fake a bit more, rotate a bit more, default a bit more, stuff like that. Depending if you can see, you know, if you can maybe punish one of the enemies somewhere. I actually need the headphones. I am, so I can actually listen to the sound of the VOD, I just realized, you know. 
Uh, smart guy. Just a second. <laughs> now, uh, one thing that you also want to realize, that you want to do on this map, is whenever enemies are Ik or Halbai on a defender's side, you don't need window, you don't need a short, you don't need the showers. Just do a five-man push through the B-long, tell your controller to smoke the window and CT for you. If you're having an omen, he can also use paranoia for the elbow. Fight for the elbow and bombsite control and be aware that enemies can be in the window and they can flank and lurk behind you. Basically, we want to minimize the amount of shits that our teammates can do during the anti-eco, anti-halbi, anti-eco rounds in general. And we don't want to die from the shotguns, from some kind of a utility, through the teleporter, getting pinched by the enemies is also bad, stuff like that. Usually, whenever you lose an idea what to do on bind, fight for the belong control. Call for the five and push through belong. Because in belong, you're never truly stuck. We always have the teleporter to reset the round and go back. And also what we can do, we can tell one of our teammates to lurk through the showers. So he keeps the TP safe while we are trying to, you know, execute the B site and while we are trying to contest the enemies a bit. What do you push in the first round? Kind of depends on the enemy's team composition and your team composition as well. Like if enemies don't have the cipher, you can do a five and push on, a, on B. If enemies do have a cipher, then usually the best idea is a five and push through A short without, lamp, without the showers control. And if, enemy, if you have a sage and enemies don't have the cipher, it really doesn't matter. You can push both B and A because sage can wall the half of the bombs so we can safely plant the spike and play the postman from the lamps, front site and A short area of the map. Your main priority is when you're playing on the attacker side, should be pressuring the enemies in B long and A short area of the map. That's where your main execute should be and where you should actually go yourself. Pushing the B sub without long control is really hard. Pushing the A sub without A short control and without the lamps control is also really hard. Also, the best executes with movement type of characters, with dive characters, you have from the long and a short area of the map. One thing that I heavily avoid in my gameplay, especially from playing below Immortal 3 ELO, is uh, going through the window. Like, I'll go through the window only if that is some kind of a part of greater majestic plan of my allies, or if I see an opportunity to kill an enemy there for free. The reason for that, like, overstacking the window area of the map is really bad. Race can use the nade through the teleporter, boombot, ultimate. Sky can use a flash dog, like, you can get easily pinched and fucked in this area of the map. Like, these two areas of the maps, you should look like a lurking areas of the maps. Like... These areas of the maps we sometimes touch to pressure the enemies a bit. And also, like, uh, there's no reason to ever send, like, more than two or three teammates through A short or through B long, uh, through showers. Unless that is the, you know, some greater plan to fake the enemies or, I don't know, do a five man push through showers, uh, do a sage wall here, plant the spike, and just play the postman from the showers in eco rounds, for an example. In this specific match, enemies do have Cypher, so the best idea is just to call for the five-man push onto the A site, and with raise, you should be doing the following. Classic Light Shield, two satchels and a nade. You're telling your controller to smoke this, and to smoke top of the truck right here. So these are the smokes that we should have. Bam, and bam. Now, I need to disable this hotkey for the ultimate because that's gonna be really annoying. Now, you start from the short area of the map on the left side here, jump spot the enemies. If enemies have the raise or fade, be aware of the seize, be aware of the enemy nade, 
Like people like to spam spam this position, like they have a claw and raise. Bait them a bit, maybe come back, wait for them to use utility, and then move in. Always try to dodge the enemy's utility in the first round. I mean, generally, when you're playing any map. Enemies have a KO. Start the round a bit slower. Wait for the knife for the first, like, five seconds. And then after five seconds, let's move in and let's execute the site. Your job is doing this. If an enemy is close, we can nade that enemy. Try to kill him. If none of the enemies are close, your job is to simply bunny hop into this position. Do the nade for that peak and just go for double satchels into the lamps. Backstep the guy in the lamps. Kill that dude. Take the front side control. Wait for our teammates to plant the spike, support them. And then we can play the post plant from the maybe lamps, like holding this angle for the information, triple shotting the enemies. We can maybe go A short, like that depends, you know, what your teammates want to do and where are the enemies at that moment of time. There's no reason to complicate the first round at all. Like, uh, just do a five man push and do a proper five man push. Now, Let's see what our friend Acid Voyager is going to do. Never in my life I would jiggle pick this angle if I'm going first. Basically, it's a suicide move. Anyways, with a classic pistol, I don't want to take this duel. I don't want it. It's way too much of a long-range duel for a classic pistol. The margin of error, the first bullet in accuracy of a classic, is huge. You want to close the gap with the enemies and fight close. Like, if you're the first one going through a choke point jumps by the enemies, if you see an enemy there, jiggle throw the nade, or just, you know, throw it like this, push that enemy back, and let's go with our teammates' utility into the lamps, and essentially, like, Taking the lamps from behind. Everything that he is doing here is unnecessary risk. Unnecessarily clearing the angles that we cannot fight successfully with a classic pistol. And you really want to avoid these type of duels. Try to bunny hop into this position. And then from this position, you can maybe fight the enemies that are on top of the truck, in the lamps, and on the bomb site. Basically, this duel here is like, I don't know, like, 33 meters. On 33 meters, fighting an enemy with a classic, I'm gonna give you a visual representation how that looks like in Valorant. That can be a headshot, that can be a... nothing, essentially. So, avoid that type of a fight. Everything that we did in this round thus far is bad. How we push the main area of the map, how we clear the angles, and the utility that our whole team did and that we did as well. You need to tell Plov, brother, like, I'm never gonna force players to be IGLs in solo queue. You don't need to do that. You can provide the silent support, but you need to micromanage your teammates a bit when it comes to their utility. So, on our attacker side, your main priority is micromanaging your controllers. We need to have good smokes to push into the bomb site and to support our place. Second priority, micromanaging initiators. If you need some very specific flash, stun or recon to do something. And number three is micromanaging Sentinels, if they're doing some really fucked up utility to guard the flanks and lurks. So, here, tell the claw, brother, don't go showers. I need your smokes to push A site. Can you smoke top of the truck right here and the bomb set right here? You know, smart ping for him. Cover this position, cover this position, and we're waiting for the smokes doing the nade in the lamps and sending it towards the lamps. 
This execute was way too premature. This execute is something that I would not do in the first round. Because I don't know what type of a setup enemies have. Like what type of flashes, recon abilities. Uh, maybe Cypher is playing A as well. You know, if the Cypher is playing A site, he might as well have some kind of a fucked up trip setup here. Trip setup here. Trip setup here. I don't want to do that in the first round. Drop the nade. Prevent the enemies from pushing and peeking. The lamps. Do the satchels behind the enemies. And when you're doing these satchels, like, basically, you know, mastering race satchels, like I've completely explained in my ranked playbook on Discord server. This is something that, you know, there are some things that can help you with the satchels, such as counting the footsteps. For an example, if you drop the satchel exactly below yourself, like, you need to make approximately, like, one and a half footstep and a jump in order to gain the fastest momentum of that satchel. So you drop the satchel below yourself, one and a half footstep, and then you go out. It's really hard thinking about this, like, it's, it's you know, on my autopilot mode, like, that's what <laughs> I cannot replicate this uh, for you. Uh, but go in a custom server, do this satchel, like, 35, 100 times, 101st time, you're gonna get it right, it's gonna click, and you'll understand how to do it. When you're doing this double satchels, behind the site here, when you end in this position, you don't want to walk up here. You know, to, to run right here. So when you're jumping from the truck into the lamps, try to bunny hop into the lamps like this. You don't want to stay exposed from the backside for a long period of time. For example, when I'm doing this play with Omen, you will always see, unless I get an opportunity to kill an enemy here, I'm immediately doing this. Bunny hopping into the lamps and avoiding the duel with the enemies behind me. Your job is to clear the lamps, take the front side control, and then we fight. Here, like, I mean, listen, Acid Voyager, brother. Like, it, when you're playing race, whenever enemies are close to you, like, here, you know that enemy Omen is still in the lamps. If you have a nade, pressure the enemies with a nade and then go for a fight. You have a nade and a satchel to engage the enemies. And what you decide to do is just to wide swing with a Yoru flash. Why? Don't risk it too much. Like, especially if you have utility already, to outplay and pressure the enemies. Like, we are not playing Counter-Strike. Even in Counter-Strike, you have a nade, you have a flash, you have a smoke. Like, if you heard enemies close in the lamps, do a nade like this, and then peek out. If there is two enemies here, or an enemy with a shotgun, that enemy is gonna be pressured to either move or leave this position. Like, whenever you have utility, Try to take as much space as possible from the enemy team by using that utility. Avoiding any 50-50 gunfights and losing your life while you still have that utility available. I mean, the worst deaths you can take in Valorant are the deaths where you didn't use your utility to fight the enemies. When you just committed to a 50-50 fight, you just peek the enemies and you're, you were like, okay, I'm just a better gamer that day. Like a good, a, a true Radiant player, I mean a good player, uses his aim, movement, positioning, utility usage, everything at his disposal to win the rounds and win the matches. Not everyone can be Scream, not everyone can be Boaster, but I think that everyone in this game can find a perfect balance between those two and reach high ELO lobbies. Like... The easiest shit that you can fix in Valorant is utility usage, positioning, pathing, crosser placement, team play, and map awareness. Those are the six, basically, like, uh, those are the six, like, uh, basic mechanics that anyone can master in this game. Because they just take practice, rinse and repeat, and custom server practice.
nothing else. A bit of self-observation, a bit of learning, you know, watch the guides, watch the YouTube videos. Like, I mean, I've, I've already done on my second YouTube channel 113 free live VOD reviews. Every VOD review is two to four hours long. Like, that is like 450, 500 hours, almost, of free knowledge. Take the note for yourself what you want to do, where you want to go, make some kind of a textual rank playbook, and go step by step. When you're improving yourself, the best rule that you can use in Valorant to improve is the 3-1-1-1 rule. What is the 3-1-1-1 rule? So basically, for three weeks, you work on one general gameplay problem, one map-specific problem, and one agent-specific problem. What is a general gameplay problem? Positioning, uh, you know, like, uh, mechanical skill, uh, uh, I don't know, like, uh, utility usage, that type of stuff. Uh, I mean, not utility users, like, like basically mechanical skill, movement, positioning, pathing, and that type of stuff. What is a mechanical problem? You know, movement, crosser placement, that type of crap. And what is the agent-specific problem, like, executes, you know, what type of executes you do on a specific map, like uh, utility usage, how you play the agent in general. Like, if you have, if you struggle to play Rays, and you don't know how to use her satchels, for three weeks, only focus on proper satchel usage. And what is one map-specific problem, like, you know, fixing one side of one map in three weeks? Like, you, you struggle playing attacker side of bind, for an example. For three weeks, focus on only gaining the knowledge about bind, and whenever you play the bind, try to apply that knowledge, specifically on that map. And in a custom server, practice your executes, utility usage, pathings, what you want to do on that map. So, don't give me this bullshit, man. You know, like, like basically, enemies are in the lamps, you peek with a Yoru flash, like, let's be honest, flashes don't do that much in this game. But Nade is gonna pressure the enemies and give us easier time to kill the enemies. We don't die, Yoru doesn't die, you don't die, we maybe get a kill. We push the enemies back from the lamps, and now we have higher chances of winning this round and playing together with our allies on the actual bomb site. In, in that previous round, everything was bad. From how we pathed through this main area of the map, from our utility usage, and all the way to not coming for the smokes. Like in the first round, most of the times the only need to thing that you need to ask your allies is for the proper smokes. Most of the times. Now when you're playing bind on the attacker side, like in a second round, if you lose the first round, the best idea is to send it A short again. Because in the A short area of the map, it's very easy for you to close the gap with the enemies and pressure them with the shotguns and close range weapons. You can also go B side through window, just when you're going through the window, like, you know, if enemies pinch you through the teleporter, we can get cucked. And with raise in a second round, if you lose the first round, buy the shorty, buy two satchels, and let's try to do the same thing. Or a same thing in a different way. Let's jump spot the enemies here. If enemies are on top of the truck, ask for the smokes or pressure them with some kind of a nade to go back from the truck. If enemies are in the lamps, pressure them, and once again, we can either go towards the lamps and try to kill the enemies with a shorty here, or we can maybe go for some kamikaze move to kill the enemies in this area of the map, or we can once again wrap the lamps and kill the enemies in the lamps. Like, where you go depends where you see the first enemy, you know, generally where you think enemies are playing. Remember, in eco rounds, you don't value your life that much. Your job is to trade yourself for as many kills as possible before your teammates start dying. Let's see what Acid is gonna do. Bounce with the flash. Enemy I'm gonna do 
Yeah, he's gonna contact us. <laughs> 50 out. Like, listen. Espe on, on some maps, forcing a Sheriff on a, on, a, on a second round is totally fine. You know, like on, on Icebox, it's fine when you lose the first round. On Abyss, it's fine, of course, like on Breeze, of course, on Pearl, okay, but on Bind, using a Sheriff in a second round when you're going A short, why? Why would I take any of these duels? Like, I guarantee you, one enemy is gonna play somewhere close on the site or in the lamps. Like, 90% of times, one guy is gonna be, you know, either here, here, or here. Your job is to take that kill and take the gun of that imbecile. Why, why complicate things with a sheriff? And trying to go for the one some magical one tips, especially now when the outlaw exists. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's really a suicide move to contest the enemies with this type of a peak that you did. If I'm playing tower, if I'm playing on top of the truck backside, I mean, you're just dead. One bullet to the body. Send it. Apply the pressure. Take the lamps control. Take the front side control for your allies. And then, you know, let's see what is the next step for us. I was gonna contact us. One of those. Okay, let me see something. Please, and it's gonna contact us. So, Soa was playing A this round. Fucking Ares in heaven. Jet lurked behind us. She pushed the. She pushed the showers. And Omen was in the lamps with the Aris. I mean, that Omen in, in, in the lamps was the easiest kill of your life. Like, if you satchel over that Omen with, with uh, a shorty, that's, that's easy peasy, man. Like, literally. Now, you would have had Aris, which is not really <laughs> the best weapon to have right now, but yeah. So, Sova, Omen, and Jet are playing A. And on B side, they have the Raisin Cypher. That's a good information. Good information to know. Plus, like, probably Raisin and Jet are gonna be switching the sites. Oh, Try to get them out of B. Yes. Okay, now we need to buy a Light Shield. Like, where we about the Ares on Vitek? This is probably the most imbecile move. You can make on bind when you're playing in rank solo queue. Enemies are playing a bonus round. And in this bonus round, what we decide to do, we decide to default, and two enemies are pressuring the enemies in B short. Three, two of our teammates are pressuring enemies in B short, and three of us are pre pressuring enemies in showers. I mean, we cannot be that stupid, literally. Like in this round, five men push B long. Five men push below. They have like two Arises. Maybe Cypher has a judge probably in the hookah or somewhere on the B side. Raise as well. We don't need to risk it. Like the absolutely easiest strategy and the most efficient strategy on bind in rank solo queue against the enemies that are eco, bonus, or halbi on a defender side that you should always do in the earlier stages of the game is a 5-man push to be long. It doesn't get more simple than that, and it doesn't get safer than that. Your teammates cannot make that many mistakes. We're always keeping our teammates in check, and we are pushing a very open area of the map where enemies cannot really camp that much with the shotguns and close-range weapons to kill us. All we need to do is a smoke for the window, one-way smoke for the CT, paranoia the elbow. If you're playing raise, you can do the nade to prevent the enemies from peeking that angle. You know, basically nade for the for this area of the map. We can send the boom bot to scout the enemies close, and we just send it 
together with our theme as towards the elbow or towards the front side. We take the elbow control, bomb side control, and then we just need to be aware that enemies can still be in the window with some close range weapons and shit like that. How we play the rest of the post plan depends, you know, where we planted the spike and also, you know, how many of us are alive, where are the enemies, stuff like that. But here, like, default, this is crazy, man. Close. Thanks, God, like... Woman just paranoia. No, I actually laugh. Could be close off. Like, clear right, I'm holding. This is the, one of the reasons why we should not prioritize the B short area of the map early on in the match. We don't know how good are our, our allies. We don't know how good are the enemies. It's an unnecessary risk. And this is one of the main reasons why I would never default on bind in the first four to six rounds. Four definitely. No, five or six, I don't know, like, depends how the five-man executes are actually working for us. And defaulting and splitting the map like this in an anti-bonus round. N not needed. Unnecessary. Crazy, crazy round. Crazy round. What do we do now? What do we do now, boys? What are we gonna do? I'm gonna sit in my heaven. Let me see this angle clearing. I mean, your angle clearing should have been a bit better here. You know, if you're moving first into the bomb site, through the showers, like we need to check this angle, this angle, move into this corner. Of course, pre assuming that we already cleared these two positions. Then we clear the back site this position and then you move towards this box there then we need to check a short like this i don't know one enemy is maybe here and then we focus on the back side we clear the tower we clear the back side and then you know depends what we what, what our teammates want to do and, and what is the round but here we don't have a spike bro what do we do now do we, we need to go a short i'm holding out for a sec no, he's coming. Right, come on. Okay, that was a risky fight, but... Wait, we can TP down if Jet left. Th there's a huge problem here that... Uh, uh, he is disregarding a possibility that one enemy can be in the lamps on the side or A short. Like, this whole area of the map right here was open for 40 seconds. Almost a minute. You cannot disregard that information. Lack of that information. Like, if you don't have that info, you don't want to spend a lot of time here. I don't want to pat like this towards the Sova. An enemy can be there, 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 killing me at any moment of time. Fuck it. Send the nade to distract that Sova and to push him back. Clear the lamps as soon as possible. Clear the front side. Jumps for the A short. Push towards the short. Clear the short area of the map. Let's retrieve the spike. But that was a nice one tip. Let's go on TP. No peeking. One enemy remaining. I mean, one good thing in this round is probably that uh, enemies have no idea that spike is actually there. Probably they didn't push that deep. But maybe, maybe Cypher is here. Like, like this smoke's here, that the enemy club is doing. Is this an enemy club? No, this is our smokes, right? We have the club. Yeah, enemies have the omen. Sorry, sorry. Like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, enemies probably don't know about the spike at all. Okay, we retrieve the spike. Cypher is the B player, so we need to be aware of his setups. You have an 8. You're pushing the bomb site. Against the Cypher. 3 versus 1. And this is what you do. G give me a break. Like, chill a bit. Wait, wait. We have 25 seconds to plant the spike. In a 3 versus 1 scenario. Chill. Wait a bit. You know, before you go out. Come a bit closer. See if there's any tripwires here. 
Then, when you want to go out, let's maybe use a nade for the CT to prevent the Cypher peeking at least one of these angles from which he can kill us at that moment of time. Then, let's use a satchel to move into this position. This is a really safe spot where you can basically fight the enemies there, there, check the long, and then let's move into the bomb site, clear the site with our allies, check the long, and that's it. Okay, done. Crazy. Crazy stuff, bro. You need to use more of your utility, man, like to, 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 you know, pressure the enemies. Make your time easier entering the sites, fighting the enemies. Uh, that's the whole point of Valorant, essentially. Play Counter-Strike instead. I don't know, play Reyna, you know, like. <laughs> I have a diamond ascendant triangle. In this round, going showers is actually okay to some degree. Because enemy jet was always playing very aggressively in showers. And unless the jet has the operator, one of the best off angles that you can hold to kill the enemy speaking in the showers is basically this off angle here. So basically, you align yourself with the orb like this and you hold this angle. Why is this good? Because enemies speaking from the showers are in the angle perception disadvantage. Like they are much closer to this wall than you are. And on this spot, like, I cannot remember the last time I actually lost the fight, but I don't hold the showers that many times, but still. Uh, the only times when you, there's a chance for you to die, high chance, is if the enemies have the operator and the jet is speaking with the op and dash and she's gonna kill you. But if jet is speaking with the operator showers 24-7, buy the op on the attacker side, hold this angle, take an easy kill, Maybe and then like move in with your allies. Very good, very good. Very good entrance. Top van. Please. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 thank a lot for the sub, man. I, I cannot have that on, on stream. Uh, so, right now. So listen here. If enemies are using some kind of a utility to pressure you, don't place your crosser immediately for that utility. Especially if that is a raised boom bot. Like, how are you so certain right now that this raise is not gonna peak together with a boom bot? I don't know. You don't know as well. Like here, while the boom bot is traveling towards you, place your crosser for the raise peak. I mean, raise players should be contesting the enemies with a boom bot, with a nade, like on the contact of the boom bot. And if Raze doesn't peak, then you destroy the boom bot and flick towards the boom bot. Anyways, you can, we can easily destroy the boom bot when it activates like in the air. Like it's very, you know, three, four bullets, that shit is down. And sometimes I even tank the damage of the boom bot if the enemies are peeking together with the boom bot. Like it is not worth destroying the boom bot if enemies are gonna engage you together with that piece of utility. Like, this is not that great. Decision making. Top van. That nade there was okay. I mean, like, whatever. A bit wasted, to be honest, because, I don't know, enemies can be anywhere, like, in that area of the map. It doesn't apply that much pressure. But... I don't know. It was, I would say, like, below average a bit, but it's not the worst shit he could have done. Aim left the game there. That should be low. No, why is it low as well? That's definitely a tilter, man. Listen, whenever you have raised satchels and you're fighting the enemies in the choke points, try always to get on some kind of a safer position and extend a bit of the gap between you and your allies. Like, still be in a vicinity 
in the range of our ether potential. But try to pressure the enemies a bit more. Like here for an example. Like why would I go out through this choke point by using my feet? You know? Like why would I take this fight, this fight, this fight? Fade reveal. I reveal that none of the enemies are here. None of the enemies are on the side. We have that information. Like use the satchel towards the bench. From the bench, hold the lamps. Try to kill maybe enemy jet at the backside. And from this position, let's fight the Sova. Let's fight the rays. Let's fight the jet. Like why would you like you should we're playing dive agents, movement characters. The thing that you really want to avoid, and that you can always avoid if you have your utility, is fighting enemies in crossfire segments. Like where you're exposed from like one, two, three, four, five, six angles. Like most angles that you should be exposed from is like maybe two that you see within your sight. But fighting the enemies here is just like why would I do that? Yeah. Uh, jump speed. Fuck, I'm gonna jump speak A and I'm gonna try to work. He's gonna jump speak A. Fuck up B. Don't think A is the answer. Bring them down. Oof, that, that peak there was really dangerous, man. Because an enemy could have been holding the the lamps and we could have died like a potato. Like, if you're jump spotting the A short area of the map, especially against the operator, do two incremental jump spots. So he, so he doesn't have enough time to actually kill you. You know, jumps for first this, the truck, and the A short. And then jumps put a bit wider to clear the lamps. And then we move in with utility. I didn't see shit. I don't know what he's doing right now. Like, first of all, enemies never lurked and never flanked behind us. Like, if enemies never lurk and never flank, why are you watching your back? Only in one round, the enemy jet uh, went behind us, but that was when uh, she pushed the showers. And she wanted to pinch us. She killed our teammates in showers. Here. What the fuck? Use that fade dog. Send it. Apply the pressure so that your teammates from the showers have easier time moving in. And why the fuck are you playing Sheriff on Bind, man? When pushing a site, like, like no reason, unnecessary complication. By the Bucky, uh -huh. hey guys, okay, not none of the enemies are here. Do the nade, do the satchels, get in this position, pressure the enemies with the boom bot, kill one enemy, take his gun. That's it. And of course, in the middle of your satchels, you should not be using the satchels like I'm doing it. Like, uh, you know, flick left and right to see, like, where are the enemies and reveal them for yourself and your teammates. Use them as a recon tool. Let's smoke the man. Ah, uh, yo, hello, baby. That's like... It's, it's really stupid playing bind in this way, like, uh, early on in a game. Like... Defaulting so much and, and and like splitting the map so much like it should be a bit faster Like faster gameplay and bind early on is much better than playing it slow playing the map slow only if the Fast executes are not working then we should change you know Figure out a way to counter the enemies Saying hello baby baby sounds weird. What's your name? Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is he saying? He's actually streaming, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm like, he's schizophrenic. Like, like, what's what's going on, bro? Like, oh, did your first swing go? Wow, what's happening? Yeah, just speak, man. Do some extra, so. I like you. Just speak, man. Do some extra, so. I like you. Okay. What? Listen, I, I don't want to talk about that round too much. Yes. Like, uh, I would just recommend you to fundamentally change how you play this map on a macro level. In the, at least in the first four to six rounds, try to be a bit more vocal. You know, communication in Valorant is not that important. I mean, it is important that you come, like, uh, 
what you need, what you see, and where you, what you want to do, but uh, you don't need to always navigate your allies. But in the first four to six rounds, you really need to do it on Bind, because Bind is a heavily defender-sided map in rank solo queue, and you need to navigate your teammates a bit more. Cheap, this is not that good. Cheap, cheap. Cheap, cheap. Now, I think there should never be a moment of time where you have like four teammates moving through the window. And anyways, you should always prioritize fighting for B-Long. But you're- I'm playing Raze, I have a boom, but I have an eight. I don't give a fuck. We have a fade. We have a Yorud. They, they can take the window. You don't need to be there. Like in this round, what he should have been doing is taking the B-Long area of the map. Now, the first time when you get a long-range weapon with Raze, like how should you take the B-Long area of the map? At the start of the round, Drop a satchel here, and use it like this. Get in this position as soon as possible. Then, jump crouch onto the bench, and then from bench, swing the enemies with this type of a crosser placement, and be ready for that fight. If enemies have pop flash agents, always be aware that they... You know, that's a very common play on this map. Enemies have, like, uh, right now, Omen as a flesh character, like, always be aware that Omen might be using this paranoia. And MSL a Sky, be ready to get fleshed. If you need to move in first through the B-Long area of the map, so you cannot bait your teammates and play anti-flesh setup right here, use your Boombot like this on that stone and move together with a Boombot. Like, that's probably the best Boombot that you can do when pushing to the long area of the map, clear this angle, clear this angle, voila, now we can contest the enemies on the site. Now, the play that I've showcased to you, with a satchel and, you know, bench, is one of the best ways to uh, kill the enemy operators uh, peeking the B-Long early in a match. Basically, using this satchel in combination with a jump crouch is really fast. Like, you're always peeking faster than enemies and getting up on this position faster than enemies. And this is a very unnatural position to have a crosshair placement ready for. Like, when I'm holding the, with op the B long area of the map, I never saw anyone. Having this type of a crosser placement. Yes, they can flick and they can kill you if they are good. But still, they need to flick and they need to be precise. And we are picking really fast with a proper crosser placement and picker's advantage. So you always have uh, time to fire at least one shot or two shots from the Vandal and Phantom. Before this guy actually flicks and tries to take a kill. Make those two shots count. Brother, if you get paranoid here, like, uh, get back or pressure the enemies with a boombot. Like, I would never in my life spray the enemies like this if I don't know where they are and if I have utility. And if I have chance to get back. Like, if I get here by the omen, use a satchel as well. Like, whenever you get flushed in the close range corridors by, with, with rays, and enemies are coming fast towards you. Use the satchel to pressure that enemy's back and go around some kind of a cover. Now, if that enemy is still close, we can use the boombot to pressure the enemies on the right side, clear this angle, and now we move in. You need to play a bit safer, man. Like, I, I don't know what you're doing. Like, you're saving your utility way too much, uh, uh, risking your life way too much as well. This is not how you played the game, like, three years ago, like, you probably don't give a shit right now, <laughs> but uh, I, I, uh, you know, if you wanna get Radiant, we need I to give the shit. I mean, holding this angle with all against the op. 
I like the confidence. You know, I really like the confidence. But with a Phantom, like, uh, I don't think it's worth taking this fight. Because even if you hit the first shot, I don't know if the second shot is going to get registered in time. If enemy jet has the operator. If he had a Vandal, holding this peak would be okay. You know. If you have fast reaction time, when it comes to the static aiming, you can take a kill. You know, I do that sometimes as well. Why not? But uh, with a Phantom, these type of shits you don't want to do, man. Against the op. I need to ask you one question. You can answer it later through private messages. Are you doing any aim training or any warm ups? Like, uh, this, this, this is looking all over the place, man. Crazy, crazy. But once again, you know, I'm gonna disregard everything that happened in this round. We're playing bind wrong on a macro level in rank solo queue. Your economy doesn't make sense for this map. What we did in the first six rounds doesn't make any sense doing it in ranked solo queue environment. This is not how we play bind. It's way too risky. Like, like, uh, it's just, it's much harder pushing B set of bind through hookah. It's much harder, and you have less chances of winning the rounds if you default early on. It is much harder executing B-Site with main prioritization towards the window. Like, change this, these small things, like, in your gameplay, like, uh, this should not be, ha like, all, all of these things are easy to change, it's just how you play the map on a macro level, nothing else. Don't pick long before I I mean, in this round, I would not have invested this much money. Basically, when you're playing half by rounds with race, and you have the race ultimate, behave towards the race ultimate as a main weapon. Like in this round, what I would have bought is heavy shield, utility, and instead of buying a judge. I would actually buy a Sheriff. Because if you do a proper raise ultimate, you can get a gun for free. You know? We don't need to invest this many credits. But anyways, even if uh, you want to play Judge in this round with the ultimate, buy Heavy Shield. I, d I don't know why you bought... Why, why you bought the... Okay, sorry, I, I thought he switched it for a Light Shield. Okay. I mean, it's fine, but I don't know. When I have the raise ultimate, like, I behave towards the ultimate as my main weapon. I just want to send it. Try to pressure one enemy or two enemies before they die from my allies. Try to kill one enemy with the ultimate and pick up his gun. That's my main priority. And once again here, instead of going through the window, just, just, uh... Sheriff, I mean, you can buy a short, you can buy a bucky, stinger, whatever you prefer. You know? I would probably buy a Stinger, knowing myself how much I like the Stinger, but I, I can see that he likes the Sheriff, so buy the Sheriff, whatever, like, you know. Long before I it. Lucifer, you're late, brother! My love. I'll handle this. Nobody hookah. Nobody under hookah. Nobody... Okay. Listen, man. It is really unacceptable. They should die from these trip wires. Okay, let's talk about the raise nade. And when sh when should you use the nade? Like uh to clear the bomb site, and when should you use nade for the cipher trip wires? So, if we are pushing the bomb site against a sentinel, 
Cypher Killjoy Vice. And your team is not using any other piece of utility to destroy the enemy sentinel setup, you need to use your nade to destroy the tripwires and shit. Basically, on bind, if you're going through window, all you need to do is simply <coughs> bounce your nade from this corner here, and that will destroy most of the tripwires in this area of the map. If the cypher is putting the trips under the window, jiggle throw that nade, destroy the tripwires first, and then go out with the ultimate. Anyways, why the fuck are we pushing through the fucking window on bind with a raised ultimate? Are we crazy? Like your executes to be longer, cleaner, easier, better. Like you're going through B long. Like we just do a, you know, boom bot maybe for the close enemies. Like, you know, either in the elbow or in this corner right here. Then we use the nade for the close trips. Like we can basically use a nade like this. This nade will destroy like majority of the trips that are here, here and here. Like, you can find some nade lineups, like, whatever, but this is sufficient enough to destroy, like, uh, most of the tripwires in this area of the map. Then, you have the ultimate. We destroy the trips. Use the ultimate. Sorry, I, I, I forgot that I put my ultimate on the X. I'm using it on the left alt. Like, you know, first satchel, ultimate, second satchel. Kill the cypher. Open the site. Why would you go through the window? And now, if you... If your teammates are already destroying, destroying you, the Cypher setups, the Sentinel setups with their utility, or that Sentinel is not killing us, or that Sentinel is not playing the bomb site that we are pushing right now, you should always use your nade to prevent enemies from peeking an angle, or to push enemies back from a pos certain position. Like, the default nade that I'm using for the B set of bind is usually this. Because that nade clears this angle and pressures that enemy to either stay here or to get out. And in the same time, it is preventing the enemies from peeking us from middle of the tube. And while we are doing that, you know, we can send the boombot, if you, if you, if you have the boombot, towards the elbow, or we can send the boomot towards the site as well, do the nade, and then do two satchels to get into this position. This is the most default execute that you have with raise on bind. And then we just wait for our teammates to come in, and we are fighting together with our allies on the site. The most default and safest shit that we have. Sometimes you want to send it elbow. Sometimes you want to use your satchel to get up here. To support your teammates from an elevated ground immediately. Sometimes you want to go immediately on the site if you have the close range weapons. But... Just stop going window. You know? Okay? Okay. Backside, backside. One more, one more. But okay, I mean, we took one kill with the ultimate, we took a second kill with the judge, like, it was, it was okay. But once again, let's speak about the utility usage. Yes, you're using your ultimate to enter the site through the window. But I would still use my nade to pressure the enemies back from the CT. So that enemies cannot peek us while we are going for the play, and while we are isolating their teammates on the bomb site. And also, when I use the ultimate, enemies cannot run into that CT smoke from the site, because I've just used the nade. So use the satchel first, use the nade, activate the satchel, activate the ultimate, and send it.
enemies on the site are dead. Then we can pressure the rest of the enemy team with a boom bot. Take the gun from the dead enemies. And get ready for the pulse plant. Or clear the elbow and push the elbow with your allies. Backside, backside. One more. That's more. Backside. Yeah. Roll for initiative. <sighs> One of the worst things you can do on bind is pushing the window against the race that has the ultimate. Personally, I would never risk my life in those rounds pushing the, the window. Almost never. It's just not worth it. I really don't want that rocket to be a dildo in my anal cavity. You know? When Reyes has the ultimate, like, she's probably gonna play a site. Maybe push a A short with the alt. Or send that ultimate through the teleporter. Together with her. So... I don't know, I would still go B-Long here. Let the Clove lurk alone. Let her play a bit slower. And let's not risk it too much. Tell your fate to go. To go like... Uh, or Chamber. Tell, tell the Chamber to lurk through the window. Ameno. Ameno dori. Ameno dori me. Ameno. 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 Okay. Never in your fucking life. I want to see ever again. That with a duelist. With a movement character. You're entering the bomb site With your feet. You know, you're not a wheelchair agent. You're not a Paralympic agent. You're not Sage. You're not Vice. You're Raze, bro. You know? You're, a, you know, not a, really a Giga chat, but... The, the, the Giga Shed Raze was deleted from the game, like from, from close beta, but let's go, I don't know, let's fly. You're flying, bro, you're fucking air, you know, like uh, West Jet, bro. Jet West. So listen, one of the most default executes that you can use when you're entering the B set is very simple from the window. We once again want to drop the nade for basically this peak right here. So we either do this, or what you can do, just need that position. Like that is the most dangerous position from which enemies can kill us at that moment of time. And what we do is we use the nade, use a satchel, and get into this spot. Then from this position, we fight the enemies together with our allies. The most simple execute ever. Or, if you have a boom bot, even better. We can send the nade deep into the... Into the, like, uh, tube. But before you do the nade, you do the boom bot for the right side. Nade, satchel. That's how the default raise execute should look like. When we are pushing onto the B side. Now this nade can go in the middle of the site. It can go back set. Depends where you think enemies are playing. I mean, enemy cypher played quite a lot inside of the tube. So I will just use the tube nade uh, instead of the back side nade. That, that's why I'm showing the tube nade. Uh, and that's it. We just need one satchel. Nothing else. But, I mean, this is just Paralympic esports, man. Going out. And also, the timing that you chose to go out, really bad. Pay attention to the minimap, like, when you're playing in Duelist, before every single execute, take one second to look at the minimap. Now, what information you're asking yourself? Do I have the smokes, proper smokes for the execute? And if I don't, from which angles enemies can kill me? From which additional angles? Do I have proper recon setup? And where did we reveal the enemies? And where the enemies can play. And the third question is, based on all of this info that I've gathered, for which execute and utility usage should I go? Give yourself two or three seconds. It's better than rushing things out, playing on your stupid feelings. Fuck the feelings, man. You know? Fuck the feelings. Play with your mind. And what you have... Play on the information that you have. 
Your teammates are not even ready to go out. Your Yoru doesn't have a setup on the site. We don't have a smoke for the elbow. Soba is using the ultimate to fuck up our teammates. Chill. Wait a bit, you know. Chill. We still won that round. Crazy. Oh my God, good. I'm going late. Backside. Mm. We were playing a shit at the start, but last two rounds were good. So you you want to tell me that your chamber has 7,600 credits and you're playing a phantom with a light shield in this round. What is this economy, man? United States of America. Like, like what the fuck is this? What is this inflation, bro? Like, your chamber is an Ara Arabian prince, man. UA prince. As for the gun. As for the weapon. Buy the Phantom Vandal, ask for the Phantom Vandal, buy the Heavy Shield, buy the Short Team, buy the, buy the Boom Bot. Your economy is your teammate's economy. Your teammate's economy is yours economy. This is Immortal ELO. Come on. Okay, I'm going mid, backside. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm going mid, backside, and I'll put a satchel behind lamps. Do I even need to say, like, how we push that A short here when the map is bad? I mean, we didn't jump spot a single angle, we didn't have a proper crosshair placement for any position. My dude went full on, full on Parkinson's disease mode. This is Charlotte, I'm playing Valorant at 10 a.m. when I wake up. Like, this is how I aim. Bro, take your time. Don't die like a potato from an operator from some random peak, like, you know. Moving in first, jump spot the enemies, clear this angle, clear this angle, clear this position. Send the boom bot, maybe, towards the lamps. Send the nade at the backside, if you really want to use a backside nade. Let's move in with a boom bot. Sorry, my mouse just... Uh, bro, I'm, I'm gonna rip this OP1 8k apart. Like, already the second time, I almost pulled the whole table, <laughs> the whole cable, like... Uh, you know, from 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 the mouse. One and have one. For the love of God, if enemies do this smoke, so let, let's recap this round. So oh, um, yeah, we're pushing B side. We're pushing B side. Uh, let's should... jump for the enemies. Fade dog is not really clearing the truck. Thankfully, Yoru jump spotted, but you could have been at the receiving end and died. We know that enemies cannot be left faded the uh, doggy dog. Enemies have this smoke. Brother, your head is way too big here. You know? Like, you cannot crouch in this smoke and use your utility. Like, you're visible from the lamps and visible from the sight. Like, my dude is trying to do this. Like... Bro! Straighten up your back. We're going to the gym, benching 400 pounds. You're not a fucking Grandma Josephine. You know? Stand up. Clear the lamps from this smoke. If you already want to be on top of the box. Or stay in the smoke. On the lower ground. When you're ready for the execute. Send the boombot towards the lamps. Send the nade backside. Lob it like a... I almost said like Michael Jackson, like <laughs> LeBron James, you know, and then double satchels into the lamps from the truck or into, you know, directly into the lamps. Also, one execute that is totally fine when you have a smoke here is doing a satchel, just one satchel with a bunny hop to get into this position. You know, we can do it from top of the boxes or just do this. This is totally fine. Or if you feel a bit unsafe, then, you know, you can do two satchels. F fighting the enemies from this spot is also fine. Then we can maybe wrap them, you know, where the fuck are you, you little Nigel Thornberrys, you know? Kill them there, or we can turn the focus towards the lamps and just clear the lamps with our allies. One and have What was that need? 
You don't want to do that. I've talked about this. I've talked about this before we started this world review. One of the first strategies we explained. If we're doing this double satchel on top of the truck, it always looks like that. It can be even faster. Like, I'm just with a new mouse and it's hard for me to strafe. Like, uh, but, you know, this is what you're doing. You don't want to fight here. You don't want to do this. Get behind that idiot. Kill him. And that's it. You don't want to stay in this crossfire for more than a second. 0 0.1 to 1 second maximum. You're out. To be honest, I, I don't know how enemy rays actually kill him. Like, <laughs> what the fuck was this need? From like... Uh, from like uh, enemy rays. <laughs> Where that nade came from, bro? Did she do it from the showers? <laughs> what was this, man? A bit unlucky there, but you should have you should have been dead anyways, to be honest. Considering how you pathed, considering your pathing through a short area of the map, considering your utility usage, and how much HP you lost on the, on top of that box because of the smoke, because you're hunching down, you know, fix your posture, man. Everything is gonna be fine. I was just sick to be in this one. I'm kidding me. He might peek with up. Where is my cloak? I think we talked about this in our coaching sessions uh, a lot of times. But I'm gonna repeat it one more time. You pull out your utility in your hands only when you're ready to use that utility like when you're ready to deploy that utility then you pull it out unless you're doing some kind of a pop flash for your allies and some utility for your teammates and they are pushing first if you're moving through the choke point gun is in your hands you're a fucking immortal tree player you know, like, you're making a lot of these micro mistakes. I don't know what's going on, man. Like, like you didn't play Valorant like this, like, a few years ago. A few months ago, actually. You're much better than this. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, you're just, I don't know. If it feels like you, you stop giving a fuck. Like, I'm, I mean, when it comes to these small mistakes that you're making, you need to be more focused. Drink, like, chug, like, you know, 20 cups of coffee. Take, like, 20 other rolls, like, uh, Sm get a bit of cocaine and that's it like play the game don't do that i'm just kidding twitch like uh, in in game in game like you know um, gta 5 6 7 8 9 hookers and stuff like that but you know you're pushing through the b short area of the map you want to use the boom bot for that angle start the round by jumping here you know place your crosser for this angle and now when you're ready to deploy the boom bot before you deploy it, jiggle pick this corner? Why not? For the info. Or jump spot it. Anyways, you're gonna do a boom bot. Anyways, enemies will know that you are there. So, go. From the left side. Place the crosser. Clear all of this. Jump spot the enemies. And now, we send the boom bot. Either for the left side. Ba ba boo ba ba ba. Or, we send the boom bot. For the right side, like just a random shit there. And that's it. To be honest, a uh, better boom bot for the right side is like from this angle, but it really depends on, on the specific scenario. This is something I will never understand. Like, uh, uh, like uh, you want to use a boom bot in some main area of the map, some choke point. And instead of jump spotting that angle first to see if enemies are holding it, you peek with a boom bot out. Why? Anyways, you're gonna use the boom bot and reveal your position. What does it change if you're shifting and if you're not shifting? If you just take one second of time 
to jump spot the enemies. It doesn't make any sense. And how we are playing this map on a macro level is just next level bad. Discord server? Discord server? You know? Text channel is called hashtag agents guides. You click on the link, you have the sync and mega cloud storage. You go into into like a ranked playbook, you go into jet, you go into bind, how to play attackers, how to play defender's side. You replicate the macro strategies and you have higher chances of winning on the attacker's side. I mean, on bind. I need someone with me. Now you don't need to be here. So, so you want to tell me? Uh, is Boombot left side? Is Boombot on the left side and Nade on the right side a good play, or should I keep Nade for backside? I mean, generally speaking, like uh, you know, if you're feeling pressured, if you think that enemies are playing in the window, it is totally fine for you to waste both of these pieces of utility to clear the window. But in the most optimal scenario, you want to save both Boombot and Nade for the actual site execute. But kind of like a general rule that you want to follow in Valorant is we want to minimize the amount of deaths that we take in the main areas of the map. Like in a perfect world, perfect case scenario, there should be no one dying before we reach this position, this position, this position, and this position. So it is totally fine, even if you waste like 60-70% of your utility, just to support yourself and your allies as you're pathing through the main areas of the map. But if the enemies are already not there, or you don't feel the pressure from the enemies, then it's better to save all of your utility for the actual bomb site execute. Like we have two, basically, uh, here we have like two contradicting rules. Like, first rule is like, we don't want to die here, and we should use everything that we have to kill the enemies there and pressure them back. But in the same time, we have a rule where you really want to save as much utility as possible before we we execute a site. But the first rule is more important than the second one, essentially. I mean, if we die in the two points, what's the point of the execute? I mean, we like we don't have people to execute a site, you know? <laughs> like We don't have a life to do it. So yeah, like, I mean, when you're pushing into the window, it's totally fine, like, using the boombot, like, uh, on the left side, using the nade for the right side, or vice versa, like, using the boombot for the left side, and using the nade for the right side and using the nade for the left side and then moving in now what i want to say is please don't swing these angles like a maniac like enemies could have been there 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 and here you don't have you don't have a smoke for ct clear everything properly we jump spot at this angle good now check this position this position this position this position with a proper crosshair placement we can go up here Check this, check that, drop down, check the CT. I was like, you're fucking ridiculous, you bad player, man. Let him base it. Tips that, both. Is that one guy backside? I'm hiding, Kabi. I'm playing off contact. Camera sees you, man. Uh, brother, like, when you hear this sound, vroom, 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 motherfucker, vroom. It means the camera sees you. You know? We are playing in Immortal. I know the update was kind of recent, but uh, that means that, you know, camera is looking at your anal cavity right now. 
and we might get shock darted by the two Soba shock darts, paranoid by omen, and we need to get out of this position, or at least destroy the camera, so enemies don't have the information about you. Soba camp saw me. Maybe I was still? Well, I'm holding Soba walk out. I'm going close. One enemy okay. remaining. Okay. Postman here was fun, you know, the positioning compared to what his allies were holding and what we were doing, like, it's... It's fine, to be honest, like... Yeah, now, hopefully, we're gonna end this good, like, on a refresh potential and well, contact... Play on me, play on me. Yeah, play on me, or we can play... We no, should play, play on the play chamber, club, yeah. Very That's good, very good, very good, very nice, okay. very nice. Okay, make me proud. Make me proud. Let's see this round. I'm not gonna be proud at all, like, we're going through window. Also, one more tip I need to give you for rank solo queue. When you push one bomb site for three rounds in a row, on any map in Valorant, one of the best ideas that you can do in the fourth round is faking the push on that site and pushing the opposite part of the map, especially on bind. Like, in this round, what I would do I would tell my chamber to take the shower's control and to keep the teleporter safe. Do a four-man push through long, do a fake, use a teleporter, and go on to the A site. Enemies already started rotating really fast. When you push one side three rounds in a row, enemies are already on the edge. Mental and physical edge. Like, basically, they don't know if you're gonna go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like, like, that's the only place that you showcase to the enemies that we'll love to push together as five. Now, uh, the only times you should disregard this rule is if enemies are equal or by. If enemies are equal or by on a defender side, we always follow like uh, the general map rules, like what we should do on that map, like what's easier for us to push and execute. Let me Oops. see the enemy's economy in this round. Okay, I mean, they're playing a uh, full buy, to be honest. Cam is above, Fuka. Uh, another thing you need to do as well. Like, if you're using your utility through the smokes, you use smart picks. Don't don't just throw it randomly. Like you're you're missing a lot of your utility because you know when you're doing it through the smokes, it's hard, very hard to be precise. Like take a time. You know, take one or two two seconds to open up a minimap, spark ping where you want to use your utility, and that's it. And here, like you have a uh, two satchels, boom bot and a nade. Why don't you use all of your utility to pressure the enemies and go for a safe execute? Especially if you're the first guy going in through the window. Like, this should always be your default execute. I mean, most of the times. So, like, we have, like, 10, 20 different raised executes, but this is one of the safest and one of the best. Like, basically, like, do the nade for this, or do the nade for under the hookah, send the boombot towards that angle, satchel here, take the kills. Or, send the boombot towards the middle of the site, nade there, use a satchel, get into this spot and from this spot fight the enemies copy copy sting him bro well, that scaling was so like on on attacker side like your main problems are utility usage better scaling and better pathing into the bomb sets and through main areas of the map and uh, essentially better executes you need to have better, like, default executes and default utility usage, essentially. Uh, and, obviously, like, how we play this map on a macro level, in rank solo queue, this wasn't good. You know, first four to six rounds, like, try to follow the rules that we explained in this VOD. Like, play together as five, execute the bomb sets together, you know, don't default too much. 
And then after the fourth, fifth, or sixth round, like we can fake, we can default, depending, you know, how enemies are playing on the defender side, how fast they're rotating, and how much they're stacking in specific positions. Overall, pretty terrible. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. Cannot wait to see the defender side. So, let's see that now. Okay, guys, now is the time for the bind defender side. Let's talk about the TLDR. Most important stuff. So, your default bomb site, number one priority, is the B site. Number two priority, A site. On this map, you don't want to really play super passive, because all of these choke points here are very easy to contest, and it's very easy to get the kills. Even if you're, even if you're playing with a close range weapons, you should at least bait the enemies a bit, jiggle pick them, jump spot them, and try to waste some kind of a utility from them. Whenever you have no idea where to play, start on B-Site, and in the first round, always play B-Site. Now, uh, where you're playing a second round depends how the first round goes, and uh, it's a slow rotation map, remember that, slow rotation map. So rotations need to be meaningful and based on some kind of an information. In the first two to three rounds, you should rotate a bit faster to support your allies, but then from the fourth round, we need to anchor a bit more and base our rotations based on what we saw from the enemy team. Now, in the first round with Rays, to be honest, you have a lot of different options and a lot of different setups that you can use to get some cheesy kills. I would always start my round in a window and try to kill the enemies coming through window onto the B site and lock down the window area of the map. Remember, when you're defending the a B set of bind, window is far more important than the garden area of the map. Now, why is that so? If we lock down the window, our teammates that are A-side can rotate safe through the teleporter and they can support us ASAP. And when the enemies are pushing through garden, it's really easy to stop them, to be honest, like if we have a good setup. Now, why do I then recommend you on attacker side to use the B-long area of the map? It's harder to execute the site. It's even harder to execute the site only through the window without a long control. And if you get stuck in a window, then you're kind of fucked from the enemies that are using the TP, basically. I know there's a lot of contradictions here, but it, statistically, it makes more sense. Now, uh, next topic. How do we play the first round? A lot of setups we can use. First setup, classic pistol shorty, you're playing alone in a window. Basically, you can buy the classic, light shield, and shorty, with the race, I would always go with the light shield. I wouldn't buy my utility. I drop the shorty here, and if I'm playing alone, I'm just baiting the enemies to come. You know, jiggle peeking them so I don't lose the information about them. I don't want the enemy sky or enemy gecko to flash me here. I want to bait their utility out. And basically, I'm gonna take this small fight, destroy maybe a sky dog, take a shorty, enemies are close, bop bop, kill the enemies, and then we can pick up the classic pistol, Pressure the enemies with a nade as they're moving in through the choke point, separate them, triple shot them, and take even more kills. And then after one or two kills, we simply go back onto the bomb site and rotate into the tube and play from the tube with our allies. Depends how the round goes, of course. Second option is like buying a ghost with a satchel or buying a sheriff and just locking down the window. You know, holding a tighter angle here, as tight as your reaction time allows you, trying to kill one enemy, and then when the enemies are coming through here, we separate them with a nade, take this kill, and simply go back. Then we can position some kind of an off angle on the bomb site, try to get more kills, and abuse as many angles as possible to kill the enemies. Uh, if you have a ghost with a satchel, you know, as the enemies are moving in, we can use that. Nade, then satchel for this guy, and then peek with a, you know, ghost and take a kill. Then another setup is like a double bait setup, you know, you can tell one of your teammates to bait for you, and you play a shorty basically here, you know, classic shorty strategy. And then, you know, like, it's easier to take the kills and make the enemies think that we're not using a shotgun in a first round. If the enemies are pushing A, no matter what happens, like, you just pick up a classic pistol, or ghost, sheriff, and you rotate fast, through the CT area of the map. If you have long-range weapons, such as Shorty and Sheriff, then the operator always go from the tower and try to contest the enemies from the tower. If you have a short-range weapon, 
classic short uh, classic shorty judge bucky shit like that try to get into lamps as soon as possible and simply clear the lamps and then you know move into the bomb set with your allies um there's a bit more different ways how you can play the first round and i'm gonna explain them in my ranked playbook on my discord server but this is like tldr essentially let's see what acid voyager is gonna do now wh wh why i wouldn't play acid in the first round acid is far far easier for the retake than b statistically i would say that these days players push a more in a first round than b but b set is still cancerous when it comes to retakes like one of the hardest bomb sites with the lowest retake rate on any map in valorant it's just way too small choke points site is very close like i think sunset b site is also going to be like that once they change the map like uh, b set of sunset is going to be hell of a time you know because it's kind of like very claustrophobic but still has those long range angles where it's just mess essentially God, let's damn. see what, what our friend Both acid smokes. is gonna do i mean if, 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 you, if you already decided to start on a set like uh, i would once again run it down with a classic shorty strategy like classic shorty strategy can easily give you one kill in a first round like basically buy a you know shorty buy a classic with a light shield jump spot the enemies here bay them destroy their utility with a classic pistol and then you know pick up the shorty from the ground kill one enemy take a classic and we can pressure maybe this one more enemy take a kill and then play the retake or fight together with our teammates another strategy that is good with raise because satchels and boom bot of raise are not that important in a first round on a defender's side you can also go ghost and shorty as well that's also a viable option like with uh, jet uh, with rays and agents that already have a very powerful signature ability so for example you know if you're playing in a window you don't need to start with a classic you can first try to kill the enemies with a ghost you know here ba 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 bap and then pull out this ba bap and then we have a ghost to continue the fight with the enemies in a long area of the map Nothing this, this is very dangerous what he is doing here you cannot jiggle pick that angle with an aid out if you don't have information about enemies on the left side i don't know what clove is doing but it doesn't seem like she's looking towards the e she's just in a win lambs doing nothing like you cannot do this basically you cannot jiggle pick this with an aid out if you don't have information about this area of the map what if the enemies walk all the way here catch you off guard as you have the nade in your hands like one of your teammates needs to be here jiggle peeking in this corner off camera Trev. sounds good i don't know what club is doing well, this might work i mean it's a default setup to be honest Stay lambs. It's good that he stayed uh, on the A side. Like, there's still there's no reason to rotate. Even though you play f uh, fast rotations in the first round uh, on bind, if your teammates are having a fun time and a good time stopping the enemy's push, you can anchor your site a bit more. Like, I will rotate only if the enemies take significant portion of the map control from my allies or my teammates start dying. Like, for example, on the B side, you know, if I'm playing A and enemies are pushing B, I'm not gonna rotate until I see the enemies here and here contesting my teammates aggressively or until one of my allies die because enemies can still use a TP and rotate towards A site so I mean here we lost a lot of timings like enemies can already be in the lambs but and also playing this position is just stupid we are 5 versus 3 you're playing one and done angle so I mean why yeah, here I would actually sell the full A control. Just go on the tower, play with the claw, and that's it. Now we so, rotate. Yeah. Now we need Not to right. rotate. We should have started rotating like 3-4 seconds earlier. That satchel was mega wasted. It, it, it would have been really good if we had that satchel right now for the retake. To displace the enemies, you know. 
90. Oh Maybe we could have waited a bit more, but to be honest, we knew that both enemies are on the site. Clove is distracting the enemies. Even if we die here, our fate can maybe capitalize on our death. Like this was... But, you know, if we had that one satchel, we could have satcheled into this position safely, like we do on a attacker side, and then from that position engage the cypher and kill the omen as well. Basically, when you're playing dive characters, such as omen, jet, raise, like, a lot of your retakes are quite similar to your executes on the attacker side. B basically, they are identical if you're pushing from choke points. You know, if you're retaking the side from the window, garden, stuff like that. Okay, I mean, like, this was... Enemy this was not bad. Can't this was not bad. Like, this was actually... Okie dokie. Now, uh... How do you position in a second round on bind? Uh, if enemies push B, and we F them up, you know, we win the round on the B site, we play A site. And that is the only time when you play A site in a second round. In every other case scenario, you play B in a second round. Now, in this round, I would simply just buy the outlaw with a light shield or heavy shield, buy all of the utility. I would tell one of my teammates to boost me up here on the box. You know, he crouches down like this. You you spam the jump button and a crouch. You get on the box and then from the box you get here. Why? No reason to waste uh, a satchel. Like, don't, don't, don't waste your utility if boosting actually exists in the game. And then from this position, I would just be holding this angle with the outlaw. Trying to kill the enemies. And in this round, I would make sure that I have an outlaw. If I'm buying the life shield, I would buy the life shield, shorty, and one satchel. You don't need anything else. And you have money to buy that if you win the first round. Uh, so it's 2,400 credits, uh, 2,006, 2,009. If you get a kill, actually. If you get a kill in a second round, you have money to buy that. So, yeah. I would just be holding this angle when you're holding these elevated positions. Always move yourself all the way back towards the drop, so you don't need to commit to the fight. You know, you can just go for a tap, drop down with a knife out, strafe down, and be safe. I wouldn't risk my life too much. <laughs> but of course, on buying, because it's a claustrophobic map, you can also buy a judge and heavy shield in a second round. Uh, heavy shield, stinger, shorty, utility. All of these close range weapons are mega good on, on buying on a defender side. Like, you can literally win the whole defender side just with a judge, to be honest. Just in a second round, remember, if you're buying a judge, you always prioritize heavy shield with the judge. Like, in a second round, when you win the first round, so when you're playing anti-eco rounds, you prioritize shields, guns, over utility. The only time I'm playing light shield is if, if, if I'm buying outlaw in a second round, because then you don't have money for heavy... And outlaw is very powerful, like... Against the enemies with no shields. I mean, you so just go for the body yeah, shots, the essentially. With you, where your spacing could have been. Let's see what he's gonna do. We're but playing Jajaroni. <laughs> so, this is a bit overstacking on Asa, but there's a huge chance enemies are gonna go A in this round. I don't know why he's nah, even jiggle peeking this angle with a... With a, with a judge. I don't need a dog. I no reason, no reason to go I out. But to be honest here, like, I, I would just play, like, uh, in the lamps. Like, there's no reason for you to be this in the, in this position right now. I mean, like, no one is watching the showers for you. We don't know where is the enemy omen. And, you know, why would you play such a one-and-done angle? So just play here, jiggle pick with a classic pistol, bait the enemies to come towards you. When they're close, we can use double satchels and just... Send it and kill them. On the contact of Clove and... Uh, and, and... Uh, that's it. Even though he has a trip wire there from the chamber, it's just like... Unnecessary risk, I don't know, like... Okay. This is actually good, this smoke works for us. This smoke was actually really nice. I mean, for us. <laughs> There's a Spike planted. <clears throat> Listen, whenever enemies are 
in a numbers disadvantage and you're going for the retakes. Always expect the enemies to pressure you. Like here, very good that he is using a boom bot. Enemy omen can be anywhere. Very good. But this is very, very good. But before he picked up the knife, he should have waited for the boom bot to bounce. Because, like, this boom bot, I don't know, it can be dodged. Like, there is a one second of time where enemy omen can peek out while the boom bot is looking towards the wall, swing him, and kill him. Now, I don't know in this silo if players are ever gonna do that. You know, if they're aware of these timings, but it's a good to keep that in mind. Uh, this is everything that he is doing here is kind of mega stupid because your job in a second round is not only to win that round a second antique round your job is also to win it with the least amount of casualties like you don't want to lose your weapon for the third bonus round we want to be, build a strong team and individual economy so that maybe in the fourth round we can buy the operator and, and have our money or if you're buying a vendor we're definitely gonna have money for the fifth round as well. Even if you lose the third round, you know. This was a bit of an unnecessary risk. I would have, like, what I would have done here, I would have just stayed in the window, wait for my teammates to get their contact with Omen, and then go for some double satchels and trying to close the gap with the enemy Omen. Now, in this third round, to be honest, I would play on the B site. Because in the first round, enemies went B, in the second, A, and in this third round, like, we don't really know where they're gonna go, but because of the A, B pattern of pushing, rule of fear, and because B set is my default set on this map, I would play B set. Even though I kind of feel, in this round, enemies are gonna go A, I would still play on the B set, just in any case. I don't know, like, B is really hard for the retake, especially in these, like, eco rounds. Okay. 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 This was a solid setup with, with a claw and 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 uh, judge, like, uh, just, you know. It's, it's... Basically, when you're playing shotguns, behave towards the shotguns as if you're using a shetty for a guardian. When you're in a close range fight, make every pellet and every bullet count. Chill a bit. You know, make sure that your crosshair is perfectly placed on the enemies and then start shooting at enemies. And also try to use uh, shotguns, especially judge, I mean judge only, as a semi-automatic weapon. Like, don't, don't only hold. You know, you're using the judge and you do this. Never do that. Like, have some, like basically aim. Think and aim. Like, have some rest in between your shots so that you're actually tracking the target and flicking towards the target. This play that they wanted to do, like, this was good for, for a third bonus round, like, why not? Just he shot this, you know, like, he he made a shot before he actually flicked towards the jet, but it was a nice play, I would say, like, it was okay. It was okay. It was okay. Oh, we win this round. Interesting. Uh, now, in this fourth round, without any doubts, I would play on the B side. I would start in the window, holding a tight angle, trying to pressure enemies there with a boom bot, with the utility, with the satchels, and locking down the window area of the map. Like, uh, there's no way in the rounds where I have no idea where the enemies are going to go. That I'm gonna play on the on the A side. And playing in the showers, like first of all, this nade that he did is absolutely wasted. Like you never want to use your nades and utility with a raise just to pressure the enemies back or deal some damage. You wanna use it to pull the enemies out of cover and navigate them in the positions where you can easily kill them. Make them move forward, make them move backwards, catch them while they're running away. Kill them and go back. Or you want to use the nade if enemies are really stuck in some positions to kill them if they are low HP and stuff like that. But this is just a waste. Like it would be much better if you use this nade in a different way. Like for example, what I would do here in this round. First of all, in this round, enemies are eco. 
and Halbai. They don't have money for good weapons. There's no reason to pressure the enemies this much. I would just be jump spotting this angle, you know, scouting for the enemies, then hold a tight angle like this, try to get a kill. On this angle, you're not risking your life that much. Then I would try to spray the enemies through the wall as well. Like this wall is fully spammable if you curve like this. And then when I hear the enemies pushing close, I'll drop the nade. One enemy is gonna be close. We kill that dude with an aid and satchel. Then more enemies are coming. We drop the boombot. Drop the satchel with the boombot. Take another kill. And then we go back onto the site. Like it's much easier with your raise utility to pressure the enemies in this area of the map. You know, right here, when they're in this corridor, instead of pressuring the enemies right here at the choke point. Because if you swing out and an enemy is there, you're kind of fucked, essentially. Like, you want to, you want them to be here. And it's so stupid that he's contesting the enemies like this in a, like playing this angle. This is a very bad position right now. Enemies are eco held by like, why would you play? So, so overexposed. With a one and done angle. And also, this angle is not even an off angle. Like, where he's standing right now, he's standing like this. Brother, like, my crosser placement goes like this. Like, he's standing exactly where players pre-aim. If you already want to play some kind of an, you know, one and done off angle and stuff like that, catch the enemies off guard. It needs to be, like, something that is n not... In, in the line of sight with an actual common angle. And here, like, I would literally pull out the boombot and engage that jet with the boombot. Why would I risk this fight? Put, put balance the boombot from the wall, boombot locks down on the jet, you peek out, kill the jet, that's it. This was way too clean. Clean gunfight, you know. Very nice kill there. Very, very nice. Okay, so I short, no. But we need to rotate. To be honest here, like, I would not rotate yet. Like, what I would do, I would just go onto tower, play from the tower, and hold the CT flank. Because Sova can go for the A side flank, like this. You know? And Race can rotate back towards the A site. Whenever you're 3v2, and two of your teammates are already already playing together on a defender side, if you have no idea where the enemies are gonna end, it is totally fine if you're trying to do something alone, solo. If you're trying to like uh, keep the opposite part of the map in control, or going for some solo play. And this is very safe because we're just watching one angle and waiting for enemies to make the sound on the actual site. Once they make the sound, we can peek out, try to surprise them, and try to take a kill. Especially here, because he made a lot of footsteps towards the B site. Like, uh, staying on the A, on that position, would be really, really good. But if he knew that, uh, you know, that both of the enemies are in the window, and that they are committing, then, okay, just rotate and help your teammates out, and that's it. We're, we're getting way too repetitive here. Like, you need to change a bit, like, how you're playing, like... I don't know what we're gonna do here, let's see. Listen, like, if you get scouted by the Soba dart, like, peeking this angle is just a suicide. Like, if you're getting scouted by the Cypher camera, like, uh, Soba dart, like, Soba drone, going for this peak while being scanned is a Sudoku move. Like, after the Soba did a dart, you either destroy it and you peek, or you abort the mission. Like, I don't know how that guy didn't kill you, to be honest. Just remember that a bad play that worked is not actually a good play, you know? Now, if you knew that enemy jet is behind that cover, <coughs> to be honest, I would have engaged that jet in a completely different way. Like here, he had plenty of time to hide behind this cover with a satchel, and now once again, engage the jet with a boombot, nade, and take an easy kill. You need to start like thinking more about your utility when you're engaging the enemies and making your fights easier because that's the whole point of raise. The whole point of raise utility is the 
uh, recon potential. Like, you can scout a very, you know, huge area of the map. You can clear a lot of the corners with a nade, with a boom bot, stuff like that. And the second power is, like, taking the fights that work in your favor. With a boom bot, nade, satchels, you know, like, displacing the enemies, uh, distracting them, stuff like that. Taking the space. This is just, you know, you're playing raids like you're playing a jet, you know? You're playing Rain, basically Reina, not, not, not even Jet. And this is what I was speaking about on the attacker side. Like, basically, on bind, on attack, e even if you get just four rounds. Like, four rounds is more than enough to win the match on bind. Because the map is, like, one of the heaviest defender-sided maps out of any map in Valorant. Bind and split. On buying and split on the attack in rank solo, you win three to four rounds. Muy bien. Muy bien excelente. I don't know, in this round here, as you know, once again, we d d demolish the enemies way too many times on A site. Once again, I will start on B. And tell my Yoru to play on, on, on A site. Okay, that setup there was like... It can work, but I don't know about it. Very good lockdown. Very good lockdown, to be honest. I, I assume that Fade is your duo. And this is re really good. Playing on her utility, on that dog, like... This is essentially how a duo queue player sh should play on a defender side. If you're, uh, if you're already playing Raze and Fade. Really nice, really nice setup. Really, really, really good. Really good setup. Really good setup. But uh, don't repeat yourself too much. Like, you already applied enormous amount of mental pressure onto the enemy team here you know like uh, at the start of this choke point let, let, let's change it a bit you know like right now enemies are definitely gonna use the sova dart drone all of their utility to clear just this area of the map how we can change the setup is instead of killing the enemies here let's kill them here you know fade plays in that angle she just hides you take this fight ba 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 when the enemies are close, she bounces the seas here, you do the nade, we kill the enemies there. Then, Faye does the dog, you do the boom bot, we take another kill. Just, just don't be too repetitive, because at some point, enemies are either gonna play on contact, and start dodging your utility, and killing you like a potato. You know, you're, you're just gonna be wasting, like, a potential to kill the enemies. Or maybe they're going to surprise you on the contact. Or enemies are going to start hard countering you. Like here, for example, they have the Raze ultimate and Sova ultimate. If I was in the enemy team right now, the Sova with the ultimate, I would arrow, insta alt, kill both of you. Or if I was the Raze, what I would do, I would use double satchels from this position into the showers and just kill you. Enemies are going for a five and push B long, huh? No, they're actually A short, okay? <clears throat> but to be honest here, like, I, I, I would have tried to stop the enemy's plant with an ultimate. We have a nade, we have an ultimate, boom bot, satchels, like, you can basically kill two enemies just with your utility before they plant the spike. I would have popped this ultimate uh, a bit, a bit earlier. And now hiding in this corner with the alt, like, I don't know what we're doing, literally, like... Uh, you... What? Why Why you didn't shoot your ultimate, like... Wait. So, 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 so you saw the enemy jet here, and instead of instantly using your ultimate to kill her, you waited? And then did this.
What? The, 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 the enemy jet? Dash? Just a second. Let me hear it. Keep the playing and the fucking planting. Spike planted. I mean, we, we, we don't know because of the... Because of the... Omen Paranoia. Keep the playing and the fucking planting. Spike planted. I'm gonna tip I don't know. I, I think I think just in this round, like we could have engaged the enemies with our utility in a much more efficient way. Like basically, you had the ultimate two satchels, boom bot, nade. Like you know, <clears throat> when you were in this position here, you could have used the boom bot to lock down on the enemies on sight, then use the satchels and ultimate to maybe kill one or two enemies, then use the nade to pressure one more enemy, like. I don't know why we lost the opportunity to kill the enemies when they were actually here with our utility. I mean, denying, like, wasting the enemy's time to plant the spy here is just pointless. They have 1 minute and 10 seconds. We are 3 versus 5. If I'm in a numbers disadvantage, I need to lower down that numbers disadvantage as soon as possible. Like, that is. That is essentially your only task. Nothing else. Fucking planting. Who's this still probably? Crap that. Don't come. Top 10 for sure. Let's start this party. Okay. Okay. This is okay. A bit, a bit of a I'm change. Leaving you. Grenade! Solid nade there, to be honest. Very good. Very good. Like, like very, very good prediction that enemy jet is gonna. I mean, prediction. Like, obviously, you see a jet smoke. She is probably gonna dash into that smoke. Very good. Solid. Now what we do here is gonna be very important. We have the Boombot and two satchels. Let's use them. Please, when you're playing inside of the smokes, any smoke, never play in the line of sight of common angles and common spam positions. You know, like, if I'm basically stuck in A short, the first thing I'm gonna spam here is this, and spamming a bit there. This, this, this. So if I'm inside of this smoke, I'm gonna hide like this essentially, behind this, you know, behind the this like uh, box. And then when I'm ready to engage the enemies, I'm gonna pull out the boom bot and try to pressure them with a the boom bot and try to maybe take a kill and go back. Race side. Pushing me off. We should have used the boombot here, like uh, when when enemy Reyes did the boombot. One is shot on the cubby. Once again, I completely wasted the nade. Like literally, why would why would you do that nade? They're gonna go B. They're gonna go B. Safra is B side. Imagine if you actually had that nade, and and you use that nade to kill the enemy omen. Turn, turn. They're gonna go B. They're gonna go B. Safra is B side. I'm 45 HP. Right Satchel, Satchel's boombot, Satchel's boombot. Oh, but... Listen. You're just not using your utility. At all. Like on the attacker's side, it is not efficient enough. And on a defender's side, you have the same problem. Like here. Okay, we got a kill. Pushing out with the gun is fine. Like, use the boom, use the boombot for something. Like, I mean, okay, so we have this smoke set up here. I'm, I'm just gonna use the claw smoke here. So we have this smoke to go out onto the site and, and, and engage the enemies like this. While we are doing that, why don't we draw the boombot onto the right side like this? To bounce inside of the tube or towards the tube. And that is maybe gonna make the enemies think that I'm going 
from the right side here, enemy's right side. And then I bait the cloth, she takes a fight, enemies won't expect you taking the fight as well. You take an easy refrag, and then we are 2 versus 1, or maybe even 3 versus 1. Like this boombot here is not only the information tool, but also the tool to play with the enemy's mind. Like when the enemies, you know, if the enemies see this utility, you know, bop bop, like they'll be more forced to take some kind of an unfavorable fight on the left side. Or they will focus more towards the right side, which is going to make your time easier pushing from the from this position together with your cloth. And if that guy was already... So you heard the enemy omen plant the spy here. Lob the satchels. You know, loba. Like, displace him. Fuck him up. Fuck up his movement. Like, do this. Like, why don't you use the satchels to engage the enemies in a fight? Like, this would, would fully displace the enemy omen crosshair placement and movement and you take an easy kill. Or engage that woman with a Ferrari peak. You know? With a satchel. Just drop it there. Take a kill. Spike planted. All of this would have been better than just uh, taking a clean fight for no reason. I mean, you got refragged, you fought together with your ally, it is not a mistake. It's totally fine. You know? Whenever you're in the numbers advantage, as long as you fight with your teammates, and you get refragged, it's not a mistake. It's good. You know, it was a good fight. But if you don't really need to die, if you're if you're already low HP, why not? You know? It's okay. Wait, uh, go why on. don't we use the boom bot? Why don't we use the satchels to mm, actually kill the enemies? I mean, don't count on it. Like generally speaking, like when you're in the numbers advantage, the main rule that we follow in Valorant is like we just want to focus on a clean a refrag game with the least of amount of unnecessary utility possible. So you don't want to use some random, you know, double satchel, some random shit like, you know, using some unnecessary smokes like flashes and stuff like that. But sometimes, especially if you're low HP, and if that utility is gonna make us take an easier fight, why not? You know? That won't hurt our timing. Especially when we're running through this smoke, like, just throwing this boombot would be so efficient. Mega efficient. To clear inside of the tube or to, to pressure the enemies at the backside. Like, this boombot would have won us that fight alone. And made enemy omen in some kind of an... Make him in some kind of an uncomfortable position to fight us. Here, like, once again, we sh like, even though, you know, enemies are pressured by the Yoru ultimate, I would have engaged the enemies here with some utility. Like, if I want to go for a clean fight here and try to surprise the enemies, Satchel, Ferrari Peak. Or, wait for the Yoru to get a contact with the enemies. Aha, Omen is here. Nade, take a kill. Even if Omen kills you, but you deal... 80 damage to him, he's gonna die from the nade, if nothing else. Fight more with your utility. Make your life easier. That should be a, some slogan for, like, Trump 2024, like, I don't know. Fight with your utility, make your gun, like, what the fuck, bro? Small thing, but I don't know why I went Phantom when I was doing great on Vandal. I don't know either, like, I mean... To be honest, like, Phantom versus Vandal, it's really a preference, like, uh, only on the long-range maps, you kinda need to use Vandal. But, if you feel it's a Phantom day, use the Phantom. It's not gonna hurt you. The, just the only thing, the only bad thing is, like, switching between these two guns way too much, like, uh, you know, during a match. Especially if you're not comfortable on one weapon over another. But it's really a personal preference, like... Whatever. In rank solo queue, it doesn't matter that much. Okay. I mean, we didn't... 
Didn't trust we win this round, we won it actually. Okay. How do we end up in overtime in this match? Like enemies are terrible on a defender side. Terrible. To be honest, like this defender side is very underwhelming. Like I mean, I mean underwhelming. Like uh, on bind defender side, as long as you abuse good off angles, you know, good strategies, good utility usage, good weapons such as judge operator, you know, stinger stuff like that. Good pixel angles, like holding the choke points, is should be mega easy. You know, like executing bomb sites in rank solo queue on this map is cancer. Essentially, this map is really built for esports on the attacker side, but it is mega easy even for ranked on defender side. <laughs> and there's so many different ways how you can play, like which playstyles you can do on a defender side of bind. Like, you can literally play the whole defender side with a judge, sheriff, and heavy shield. Like, literally. Baiting the enemies with a sheriff in a long-range fight, fucking it up with a judge in a close-range fight, and that's it. <clears throat> you can play operator. There's a lot of great pixel angles, off angles that we can use, like, to displace the enemies, fuck them up, like, uh, try to get a kill, like, and then go out... You know, some of the off angles you can play in three, four, five, six, seven different ways, you know, truck. We can hold this pixel angle here to kill the enemies on the bench. We can hide here on this white line. Enemies are moving in. Bop, take a kill. Pressure them maybe with this bounce nade here. Get into the lamps. That nade is gonna splatter here. We take another kill. Like, it's easy. It should be easy on defense. <laughs> here, I, I, I let, me, let me just hear something. I'm not using a headset because I don't know why today, like, I'm just not feeling it. Just a moment. Let me see this play again. <laughs> here, like, the only mistake that we are making, you know, this mistake we also made, like, uh, the previous times when we pressured the enemies in the showers. You're using your utility way too early on. You and both, you and both your duo. Like, when you hear the enemies pushing through the showers, you really want to engage them with a dog, Boombot and Nade and Seize, when they're actually here. Like, you need to wait for better footsteps, be like better audio cues. Like, that is where your fade wants to use the dog, then we use the Nade, then we kill the Jet, and then we go back. Or we use the Boombot together with the dog, and now Jet is like, you know, panic mode. I'm not gonna use dog and utility before the enemies cross into this position. And if enemies are playing on contact, let's say you're standing here and waiting for the enemies, when do we want to use our utility? Blindly. After 7 seconds. After the round starts. Because enemies need around 7 seconds to do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And they literally need to, you know, Formula Monza, bro, like Monaco, literally, like, they, they need to drive into this corridor. But no one is gonna do that, As, at least a normal player is not gonna do that, you know, we need to jiggle peek this angle, then move in, then clear this corner, clear this corner, like, a good player should take at least 10 seconds to clear all of this. Way too, way too... Early utility that. and early engagement. <laughs> These timings, you need to hit them right. We're not stupid, we're good players. Just better efficiency of utility and we're good. Okay, let's hold a tight end. I don't think your reaction time is this bad. You know? Like, this is way too wide of an angle to hold it like this. You know, if you want to hold this angle this wide, just jiggle peek it. Just go all the way to this wall and jiggle peek it and hold it like this. If you want to hold it as a tight, you know, basically pixel angle, 70-30 gunfight, then it needs to look at least like this. Minimum. If we don't want to die like a potatoes. Here, you should have been dead, to be honest. Like, that was way too wide. 
remember that your job when you're holding these tight angles is not really to take a kill. Your job is to damage the enemies a bit, get the information, and then re-engage the enemies with a peaker's advantage. Or with your utility. You know, if I'm playing race, I'm just gonna hold this for info, and maybe to get a kill, you know, we focus on the yellow color. As soon as we see the first yellow pixel, we go for one shot, or a burst fire. Now I know that the enemies are there, and now I can pressure that race, that uh, jet with a boombot, peak with a boombot. She destroys the boombot, we drop the nade, now we take a kill. We dro drop a Ferrari satchel, try to get a kill with a Ferrari satchel. Like, that's how we should be playing in the choke points with race. Like, you're kind of mainly fighting for information first, and then spamming your utility, not randomly, meaning in a meaningful way, to engage the enemies in an easier gunfight. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think that we were way too repetitive there, like, I mean... I mean, as long as something is working, you should be doing it. But this is, was way too much, to be honest. An enemy should have ca countered you a long time ago. Shots off, I can. This is way too passive. Listen, like, you want to play close-range weapons somewhere. You know, in some close corridor. Such as lamps, for an example. I'm not going to start my round like this. You know, waiting for enemies. I'm gonna start my round by jump spotting the enemies. Getting the information for myself, my teammates, and making the enemies waste some utility just to clear this area of the map. Then, I'm gonna fall here. To bait the enemies and make them think I have a classic pistol. Or, to destroy the sky dog. Sova drone, Sova dart. And then I pull out the judge. Ba ba bap. We kill one enemy. Maybe we kill the second enemy. And we go back. Here you waited too much, man. Like, uh, to be honest, like, when you're playing these close range weapons. As soon as you see a, the first opportunity to take one, two, three, four kills, you should take that opportunity. Like, this is like a, more like an eco halber round for us. We only have a judge with a life shield and utility. If you take two kills, your teammates have 20 to 30% higher chances of winning this round. We heard enemies pushing in, especially the raise with the ultimate. Like, just because of that raise ultimate, we were forced to make some kind of a move. Like, I would instantly hear drop the boombot through the cypher shit, drop the nade for the enemies in that position, and try to go for some double satchel play to kill the enemies here. Before the raise destroys me with the ultimate. Or before raise destroys my teammates with the ultimate. This was way too passive. And aggressive plays are not always good but not always bad. Like, you need to min-max things, essentially. Like, you need to ask yourself, is it worth it sometimes to trade yourself for a kill or two kills? Because in certain scenarios, we're really pinched by the enemies. In this case, we're pinched by the enemy Ray's ultimate and enemies on front of the site. It is completely worth it for you to try to trade yourself for as many kills as possible before you die. You cannot always, like, make a numbers advantage and escape. Especially when you're playing these close-range weapons such as Stinger, Judge, Bucky, you know, Shorty, shit like that. I mean, not shit, those are good weapons, but basically not really the weapons with which you can fight every single fight. It is good when you, when you, when you smell that opportunity to trade yourself for, like, two or three kills, use it. Because here with the Boombot, Nade, and Satchels, we can definitely get, like, two kills before we die. Or at least get one kill and apply enormous amount of pressure and damage onto the enemies that are pushing through the choke point. Just one kill here would have potentially won this, uh, won this round. Call. 
as I would. And made enough so. pressure for our teammates to... No, 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 like... We're back on the attacker side, we're in the overtime. And like... Uh, what I would do once again here... Is... Uh, farm and push belong. In overtime, I would always do that strategy. Like, it's, it's way too much of a risk to do anything else. I, we have no idea how enemies are gonna play. Like, you cannot really take information from the regular part of the match how you want to play overtime against those enemies. Like, God knows what enemies are gonna do here. Like, I would just take B long area of the map in the most safest manner. You know, use the satchel on the bench. Clear the long, because enemy just might have the operator. And I would do some kind of a <clears throat> five-man push B-long or a 4-1 split. One guy lurking through the window and four of us taking the B-long area of the map. Okay, true, but not, true, not true, again. True. No, not, no, no, we are once again going through the window. Like no, You never path from the right side. Like Avoid this duel. You don't want to fight this. Fuck that shit, bro. You don't want to get flashed by the enemies like... Uh, uh, Peaked with the enemy's utility when you're pathing through the B short towards the, towards the window. Never path like this. Always path like this. Always have this cover and this cover for yourself. Let your teammates be the first contact and refrag them or take a fight together with them. Because you never know if your teammates are gonna refrag you. Solid clear there. We should have cleared behind us. No, nobody cleared. Wait, he's coming CT. Don't let CT off. The three of us went into window, and nobody cleared the left corner. Am I crazy? We dropped. What? Who told you that Jet is not baiting for one of his teammates? I don't know, I'm, I'm not a Nostradamus, neither are you. Where is this coming CT? Don't let fucking CT off. Maybe you are. Are you a wizard, Harry? Once again, absolutely wasted nade with zero purpose. Like, you need to use your utility more when you're ready to go out and to pressure the enemies. And also, when you're using the utility, like, you want to use the utility for the initial sector that you're pushing if you don't have the, like, uh, control of that sector. Like, B-set is kind of split, like, uh, you know, we have the sectors 1, which is basically, like, the choke points. We, we got the control of that. Then we have the sector 2, which is essentially the site. And then we have the sector 3, which is basically the elbow area of the map and the CT. Like, I'm not gonna use my nade for the CT because there's enemies definitely on the site. Like, it's be much better, instead of stopping the enemies from helping their teammates on the site, to use the utility to kill the enemies on the site as soon as possible, before their teammates even connect with them. Now here, we should have once again used the boombot for the left side <clears throat> to clear the tube or something, use the nade for that position, and then do this. Get, I mean, that was a shit satchel, like, just use a normal satchel. Bunny hop into this position, clear this, clear the window, and now, with a second satchel, we can engage the enemies on the site, maybe go above them as well, like, try to pressure them, maybe we can just peek them into the tube together with our allies, like, we can use the second satchel to stop the enemies from CT, from helping their allies. This place, the enemy's movement at the back side, like, once again, a completely wasted need. Boombot exists. Boombot exists. I don't know why you're holding this. Like, but here, like, I'm fuck holding that tangle. Why, why are you holding the enemies to peek you? Drop a boombot on them. Pressure them, take a spike, plant the spike, that's it. You don't need to take that fight. Like in Valorant, there are some fights that you need to take, some fights that you don't need to take. And usually when you're in a numbers advantage, you can avoid most of the fights, like... Especially if you have the satchels. 
See, that is a good race, just, to, you know. We were... You know. We were there to refrig our chamber. Tell me, tell me. City. Because I see blood. You mean blood sees you? <laughs> because he sees blood. The last time he saw immortal rank, you know, the red rank, was a few years ago. Brother, let's, 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 let's get that fucking radiant, bro, you know? F fuck the kills, fuck the blood. Okay, uh, as I said, like, we, when, if we are doing this setup, we Good need enough. to have someone watching the... It got, it got one, it got one. Left side. Nah, he's not bad. Low HP though. We found one. Wait, wait, just this one. Play along. No, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> dogs, dogs, dogs. Okay. Yeah. This was a good setup, why not, like, you know, double tower setup, one guy crouching, one guy standing. It can work, why not, like, sometimes it's a risky setup, but 80%, 70% of times I, I would say this works. You know, 30% of times there is a chance that he magically, with a bad crosshair placement, he kills the fade and then one bullet goes into, into like, head, like, I don't know. Nice gun. I'll find you. Reloading. Can you hold me for a sec? Somebody else. Yeah. Let's go north. Why? Why? Why satcheling, bro? Just rotate by your feet, man. Like, like, uh, w w we wasted a boom button satchel for nothing. You think one more enemy showers, you know, and he's gonna engage you? Come close to the showers, jump spot, and that's it. You want to rotate from here? Go behind the site. Do this. And now we have like two satchels and a boom bot for a potential for a potential retake of the B site. You, you, brother, like inflation is high. It's 2024, it's only getting worse. I know that that Swiss, you know, Frank, you know, your your currency in Swiss is like still holding on they still have the swiss gold from like world war ii and stuff like that you know nazi stuff but it's gonna hit you one day as well like wasting like 450 dollars like that okay, okay. not that good i, I think boom but like is that Number like one. 450 credits i can five with clove and two seconds one enemy remaining okay, okay last spike down b gg's guys Remaining. Okay, last. Spike down B. Oh, you're from Luxembourg. Sorry, 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 man. Like, sorry, sorry, S sorry, Two sorry, seconds. bro. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Okay, Spike down. Prixi, Prixi is actually from Switzerland, as as far as I know. A other guy that got radiant, not tested version that got only mortal three. Okay, last. Spike down I'm disappointed, bro. Like, I mean, you've been playing this game for so long, and okay, last. Spike down you, you you got the mortal three really fast. Like, that, that that's the problem. Like you got the Immortal 3 in less than 4 or 5 months. You know? And 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 all of a sudden, like... I don't know what... To, like, you're just repeating the same mistakes over and over again. Like, take things one step at a time. You know? Let's talk about the end of the round. Like, end of the round was absolutely fine. Like, you know, nothing special. Our team has killed the enemy in the long and then like uh, we killed the enemy in the window with a spam everything fine all good like <clears throat> i don't know try to focus uh at w one thing at a time like for example like you know you can still keep maining jet and raise but tr try to use that you know 311 rule that we talked about at the start of this VOD review. Like for three weeks, focus on one gameplay problem, one agent problem, one map problem. You know, for three weeks, focus on, I don't know, maybe certain part of your mechanical skill. Based on this VOD, like, uh, I would say that your micro adjustments and micro corrections can be a lot better. 
and that is you know you can just use any playlist uh, uh, for micro corrections any Kovax one or I can share something I'll share something with you I have some private ones as well uh, and let's work on that for three weeks then one agent specific problem like one problem that we have with uh, with like uh, rays is efficiency of our utility we don't need to focus on everything you know satchels nade and boombot let's only focus on using more efficient nades for three weeks on every single map like using efficient nades to clear certain areas of the maps to pressure the enemies and to like uh, uh, execute the bomb sets and retake the bomb sets then when it comes to the map specific problem let's only work on let's say attacker side of bind using better executes general better utility general better pathing and general better macro gameplay that we spoke about i think that is something that you should try to implement considering that you play this game for four years already and essentially like that can be a solution to all of your problems instead of focusing on everything at once just go step by step you're probably gonna play this game for another four years probably let's be honest let's let's use them this time let's go one step at a time and uh, you told me through the private messages that you have a problem with the schedule and school like uh, in private messages i'm gonna you know i, I don't want to dox you and then like you know basically community doesn't need to know your schedule like uh, uh we'll make some efficient schedule for you where you can actually practice aim train and at the same time play the game and have time for the school and everything else because i really think that you know you're you're communicating more much more than when we did our coaching you have a really much better idea of how to play valorant you applied tons of the rules and tips that we've discussed years ago but you're kind of sloppy like from time to time you you don't you rush things out, uh, you're not waiting for the good timings, your utility is like half wasted, half good, like you're just winging stuff based on your feeling. But even though you got Immortal 3, you still cannot play on, on your feeling. I can play on the feeling, you know, like I can just do some random shit and it, it might work just based on my experience. But also you didn't put that much time like into the game, you know, Anyways, I don't know. We'll we'll talk through the private messages, like when it comes to all of the other, all of the other topics. Anyways, this this world review took us a lot of time. Like I think it was like three hours or something. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, join my Discord server for private coaching. Like uh, <clears throat> basically, I organize giveaways for coaching, world reviews, and Valorant points on every 50 new Twitch subs on my twitch channel and soon i'm gonna do that on discord as well uh if you're a subscriber you know on youtube twitch and or discord you get the access to my rank playbooks uh, there you can get the coaching all of the good stuff is on discord uh, make sure to join my daily streams twitch.tv for also charlatan not really daily but i'm trying to be very regular like uh, at least four to five times per week and yeah that's Kind of. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.